No. Yes. I just woke up like half an hour ago. I have a right to re, okay? You have no rights. Oh. You will eat the bugs, but get- No! <laughs> yeah, I also woke up just in time. I was like, I, I barely woke up and I was like, oh, check the time, check the time. And it was a little bit after 12 and I was like, or for me, it was a little after 12. Uh, it'd be one for you, but I was like, oh, fuck. Take a shower, yeah. get up. So, Cree, what have you been up to this week? I released a video on Friday. Yeah, and how's it been doing? It's doing pretty well. It's, um, doing, it, as far as uh, views go for the time it's been released, it's doing the best of any video on my channel. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully that trend keeps up. Yeah, absolutely. Um. And you have, a uh, you have part two coming soon, right? Yes, uh, June 30th, uh, exactly two weeks after the release of the first part this past Friday. Yeah. Um, like, literally, after the stream is over, I'm going to get the last little bit of editing done I need on part two. Then tomorrow morning, before I go to work, I'm going to set it to render, because it is a chonky fucking boy. Yeah. It is also, over. hopefully this time it'll render with audio. Yeah, that, that was me fucking around trying to speed up um, rendering on the censored version of the Saints Row video. And I, I don't know why it did that. But that is also fixed, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Saints Row video will be re-releasing um, this coming Friday. Um, it's mostly the same, except there's, a, a, there's an additional 10-minute segment in the video. Where I address uh, the part where Snakeer called me out in his video. I should say called me out. Took a cheap shot. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty much the same. I was gonna add more to it, but that also involved playing more Saints Row 2022, and I just, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't. I don't blame you at all. The funny thing I did learn is all this time later. The wiki for Saints Row 2022 is still bare bones. So few people have any passion for this game that most of the pages for, like, missions and characters on the Saints Row 2022 wiki are still, like, empty or stubs. This article needs expanding, stuff like that. Five pounds yep. from Threadknot. Thank you. Here we have Creed listening to Such Remember his favorite game. I'm kicking <laughs> uh, I'm kicking the road down the poisoned well of proof so I don't have to prove it. Ah. Oh. What the fuck? What the fuck? Hold on. What? Uh sometimes you just come in and you get weird, weird What? Um, yeah, uh, just in our chat, you can just read that uh, yourself, though. Pagan, what have you been up to for the week? Uh, mostly playing Seven Days to Die with Kree. Yes, Pagan has been a bad influence. <laughs> You're the one who asked last time. Pagan is always a bad influence. You're a bad influence, Kree. too. You tried to make me watch a movie when I should be editing. You're all Yeah, but influences. you say no, and then I go, I move on. Except for the Mario Brothers movie, just because I find it funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, speaking of a movie, me and Pagan watched a movie last night. Yeah. I, I Please don't go into details on it, because that will be the movie we are watching uh, this Saturday for Saturday Showtime in my community. Um, okay, well, chat, you... so it starts off... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, overall, what would you think of the movie? Oh, I loved it. That was great. It's fucking yeah. hilarious. Yeah, I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Again, the movie is named Grabbers, and we will be watching that this Saturday in my community. Is there anything else uh, you did this week, Pete? Uh... I played some Fallout. <laughs> That's about... No, I haven't really done anything. 
Fair enough. Well, this week, besides doing more Rumble stuff, uh, obviously we did uh, Wind Talkers on Saturday Showtime for this Saturday for me. Or I should say yesterday. Um, yeah, fantastic uh, World War II movie set in the Pacific Theater. Really, really good film. Um, just, yeah. Though, uh, the special effects guy, whoever was on special effects for the movie, clearly had an obsession with fireballs. Because, holy shit. And if I remember right, in the making of thing, they talked about how they used, like, a tanker truck or maybe two for fireballs in that movie. Because, you know, Hollywood's like, an explosion has to be fiery. Otherwise, how's the audience going to know it exploded? It's like, mm, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just a, just a great movie. It was about the, uh, Navajo, uh, code talkers who got nicknamed wind talkers. They were, uh, just a fantastic film about how the, uh, U S Marine Corps used Navajo, uh, Indians, uh, speaking a code version of their native language to throw off Japanese code breakers. So that way the code can never be broken. It was a, uh, just a fantastic movie. I got to see that the new Star Trek Infinite game that we were talking about uh, from uh, Summer Games Fest, it, uh, it's going to be a 4X game. So what that should be 4X? fun. 4X? 4X stands for uh, Expand, Exploit, Extermination, and Extortion, or something like that. Hmm. What is it? But it, it basically, it's... Um, have you ever heard of games like Stellaris? I've heard or, of it, but not too much or since the solar empire is kind of 4x although they streamlined it a little bit but i'd say it's a 4x game i'm going to go four? afk in just a minute because i've got food arriving yeah explore expand exploit exterminate that's it okay there you go mm. yeah, yeah, yeah it is a uh, really really good um it's a genre that I like a lot. So, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty interested because, again, Cardassians is going to be one of the factions. And it's like, hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, we got the Cardassians, the, Star, uh, the Romulan Star Empire, the Klingons of the Federation are the four playable that they showed us so far. Yeah. I'm, gl I'm glad they uh, include the Cardassians. <laughs> Because a lot of Star Trek forgets about the Cardassians for some reason. Well, it seems like it seems like they didn't play that big of a role in the one show that most people are more familiar with, um, TNG. Like they showed up from time to time, but they didn't leave as much of an impact as like the Romulans, the Romulans. did. Um, they obviously are far bigger in Deep Space Nine, though. Oh, yeah. It, Deep Space Nine did a lot of work to flush them out. Yes. Fantastic work, too. Yeah. Speaking of, we'll need to make Pagan watch uh, Season 3. Yeah. We need to get him into it. We, we could start on that as soon as I'm done, like, Part 4 of the Fallout 4 analysis. Yay! In 2025! Woo! No, that's, Part 4 is set to release for the end of July. I... If I work on it really hard, I could get it done by then. Yeah. Uh, man, um, I just did more Rogue Trader, which is shaping up to be a really, really good game. Uh, really, really fucking janky. I'm getting more and more of the the this isn't done yet uh, vibes as I go further along. But I'm actually really enjoying the politicking and everything in that game. A lot of... Uh, the nice little intrigue and stuff on top of being a Warhammer 40k game, and fact that it's a uh, Warhammer 40k CRPG. That's always a it's always a blast because it's the first CRPG in Warhammer 40k ever. Oh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. I'll be right back. Okay, do you want me to do the super chats while you're gone? Yeah. Okay. Uh, five dollars from Waylay108. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Happy Father's Day. Glad to see Daddy Kratosis, Papa Setch, and Pappy Pagan <laughs> once again. Love you, dads. Oh, no. There you go. 
There you go. Uh, ten dollars from Glory One. Father figures they much. need. Ten dollars from Glory One. Uh, first time ever donating. Happy to show my support for many hours of entertainment and hopefully many more to come. Thank you to all. Thank you. That's appreciated. And we got Grandmaster Pi. Welcome to Owl membership. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, politics in and of itself isn't bad. It's how you handle it, right? And here, they, they're they very much the political intrigue of, like, the different familial houses against each other. Because not only do you have the two other rogue trader uh, protectorates that you go against, but you also have... On every single planet that you own as a protectorate, you have the major houses and the minor houses and the squabbles between them and everything. So it's been pretty enjoyable so far. Uh, $20 from Grandmaster Pi. Thank you very much. Yay, Stag, while working on an American Revolution paper. Time to give myself a headache and aneurysm at the same time. Power to the furries. Uh oh. <laughs> Is someone seriously trying to defend the Saints Row reboot? Yes, but this isn't a recent video. This is more around the time when the reboot was released, before like the whole House of Cards fell out. But it's the fact that multiple people did it at this point is the weird part. If I had a nickel for every time someone defended the Saints Row reboot, I'd have two nickels. It's, <laughs> that's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Well, three, technically. We have three people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But that ruins the joke. It still works. Not a lot of time, no. but it's still weird. Now, granted, we don't know for sure if this guy is going to be entirely opinion based, therefore to be entirely subjective, or if it's going to be objective. But the fact that his thumbnail, which I uh, maybe Cree will show the thumbnail when he gets back, but the thumbnail is Saints Row Review. It's actually pretty good. That's uh, again. That's an objective uh, statement of quality. That is not an opinion. So uh, yeah, we'll see. I didn't, I didn't preview much of this one. Um, I was going through a lot to see which which one we wanted to cover, but uh, there was one thing where I was like, mm, "Yeah, this is probably going to be bad," and it was when he said uh, that he he kind of glosses over it really quickly, but he's like, "Oh yeah, it's like people hated this game." You know, there were some valid ones, but, you know, there was also some not so valid, you know, and then moves past that. And it's like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Oof, that. I am back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, if you want, like I said, if you wanted, you could show the thumbnail for this video so people can see what I was talking about. Um, oh, uh, we need to use a thumbnail grabber. I'll take a minute. Okay. Just to make it, I'm just reading these super chats on my own since I missed them while you read them. Yeah. Oh, you do that. I'm going to go put my burritos in the air fryer because I'm, I'm getting hungry. All right, thank you for the uh, super chats uh, for the people who sent them and the membership. And Grandmaster Pie, I'm not a furry. Furry. <laughs> Did you hear what I said uh, just such a second ago about this video? No. Uh, so we basically explained that, um, you know, this is from back when the game first came out. It's not a recent video, but it is weird that there's been multiple videos defending this game. Yeah. And um, I said the thing that I didn't preview much of this. I, I didn't get very far into the video at all. But one thing I did notice that made me go, yeah, this is probably pretty bad was when he said, um, you know, all people didn't like this game, you know, for some valid reasons. And then you know, for some not so valid reasons, and he like skips over it really quickly. And it's like, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what? What do you mean? I, oh boy! It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I I went to put in the image and I saw the cursed gun edits from last week from Starfield. Mm. <laughs> A valid argument? No. Pipe bomb. 
<laughs> it's actually pretty good. Uh, man, yeah. I don't know. Like that's why I, I said uh, I don't like it, shitting on people's actual opinions. But like, how can you play this game and think it's good? Yeah, that's why I said his his actual title is he enjoyed it, and it's like okay, well that's an opinion. Yeah, you know you, you can't really do it. You can just ask why, but you can't really do anything with an opinion. But then yeah. his thumbnail is it's pretty good. That's an objective qualifier of, of uh, quality. So no, yeah. Well, we'll see how this goes. Very poorly, I assume. That overlapping text is giving my OCD AIDS. Wow. Uh, Tentacle Dude says, Every opinion is valid. Motherfuckers, when I share my opinion on minorities. And then he says, It's a bunch of, like, uh-oh faces. <laughs> 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 Slur? No, I believe I was being very clear. <laughs> All right, Sorry well. I'm a bit slow on trying to get things together right now. Like I said, I woke up late and I just had food arrive, so I'm trying to take care of all that. While also not making too much noise for chat. Yeah. Re. I suppose let's grab the video, then. Well, I guess while we prepare that, we can talk a yeah, little bit just... about Alpha 21, because... Oh, boy. There's... Oh, oh, boy. Definitely a mixed bag. Um, we've seen... I think mostly it's good. There's just a couple of changes that I'm like... The water change know, is like really you... fucking annoying. Yeah, the water change is super annoying. I don't really care for the water change. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Yeah. Um... But we still don't have a fucking dew collector, and we're past the first horde week, so... Yeah. Uh, the yeah, part about not, they, 21 and 7 Days to Die. Yeah, and 7 Days to Die, and it is just oof Yeah, and in terms of getting the water. Yeah, and like there's just no reason why the old system had to go away. It made total sense. Oh, you find a jar, you jar some water from a water source, and then you fucking boil it so it's safe to drink. It's it's really simple. It's really easy. It makes sense. Now glass jars don't exist anymore, and anytime you do get a jar of water, the jar just disappears after you drink it. Yep. Which, that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it, it's fucking weird, and... If they had made getting the filter a little bit easier, it wouldn't be so bad, but it's a very rare item in loot, and it's a super expensive in the uh, in the trader. You do sometimes get it as a reward, so you can get it for free, but it's always mixed with stuff where it's like, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to take you know this reward over the fucking filter that so I can build this thing. Would you like 10 pipe bombs, a bundle of... Uh... Skill books or a water filter. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that, I know which one I'm picking, and it ain't the fucking water filter. <sighs> but I do like everything else, though. I love the new models. I do like um, the car mechanic thing with the, like, the cop cars. And I think lock cars also have alarms. Where we haven't really tested that. But, um, yeah, if you want to get into lock cars now, you have to either beat your way into them or lock pick them. And hitting them causes an alarm to go off, which summons a mini horde. So, kind of like Left 4 Dead. So, that's kind of neat. I like the new uh, obstacles, like the fire thing that you have to find the valve for the pipe to turn off the fire to get through, like, a hallway or something. I like that. Especially when zombies run into it and basically kill themselves. That's great. Uh, I love the new trader bases. Yes. Um, Hughes is a little eh. I, I do feel like Hughes was better in the previous game, but... I don't mind Hughes' base, but I wish it had been given to someone else. Yeah. yeah but everyone else got, is like, so far... Instead. Yeah, but everyone else's so far looks really good. Um... Uh... There was something else I remember that we were talking about where we were kind of like, um... 
I know they changed the lighting, so good God, when it rains, if you don't have a flashlight, it might as well be fucking night. Like, <laughs> it is so dark. Yeah, and the helmet light mod is so much more rare than it used to be. Which is weird, because when we played Nava's game, I got... I immediately found a mining helmet with a light on it. Like, it was like the first thing I found. But then oh, yeah, we by the decided way, the Nava's that... game map fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. And then we decided, fuck this. We don't want to play Nava's game. We want to just generate a random map. And then ever since then, we have not found a fucking light mod. <laughs> also, the first Horde Knight for two people on normal difficulty was insane. Yeah. It. Yeah, I might have to turn that down because that was like a fucking week three level horde for the first night. And it was like, oh, God. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, the fucking dire wolf thing. So when we were playing Nava's game, we went into uh, this house and I think it was like a three or four star. I, I think it was a three star um, house, but it seemed like it was mostly clear at the start where the garage is. So we were just going to go up and grab a couple things and leave. And we parkour our way up the stairs so we could get to the attic. And we get up there and there's a fucking dire wolf that just <laughs> wrecks our shit. And we were like, what the fuck? We were like, was that a part of the POI or did that somehow get like, did it wander up there before we got here? And uh, I, I wasn't sure. And then, um, well, we, God, we tried to get back in there multiple times and a fucking mountain lion decided to join us and go up there as well. And fuck it, so we had to deal with a dire wolf and a mountain lion at the same time trying to get our stuff back. Um, but then when we did the, uh, the random generated map, I went to a place called Doggos. Uh, it, it was a tier one or no tier two. It was a tier two job. And I was like, oh, God, a place called Doggos. It's going to have fucking zombie dogs in it everywhere. And yes, it did. It had six. It had six zombie dogs in it. And I was like, oh, my God. And I'm trying to get, you know, I'm doing a fetch quest. I got to get the package. And it says it's on the roof. So I climb up on top of the roof. And right next to the fucking package thing that I have to search to get to complete the quest, a fucking dire wolf spawns on top of the roof right next to the thing chases me down and I get to the bottom and I'm like, Oh, I think I lost it. And right as I'm like thinking about going back in to deal with it somehow, three fucking zombie dogs show up. I have to deal with that. They almost kill me. I kill them. I'm healing myself. And right as I finish healing myself, the dire wolf makes it to the bottom and starts chasing me too and chased me off the fucking POI. And I failed it because it pushed me too far away. But Good God. It, it was a tier two job, and they're putting fucking dire wolves in the POIs now. Yeah, they also put um, sleeper sleeping uh, screamers as regular POI enemies now, so you can find screamers just laying down or hiding in POIs. Oh, great. Yeah. Summon the fucking horde every time you explore one. Yeah, well, thankfully, we haven't actually run into any. I do know that they're there. I've seen people, like, run into them and be like, oh, no. You fortunately, we have not run into any yet. You won't have to deal with a horde with a screamer if you just fucking dome them immediately. Yeah, if you kill them fast enough, you won't, you, know, you won't have to worry about it. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things in there, though, that I, I do really like the changes for. There's a few where I'm just kind of like, ah, but why, though? The... Yeah. Yeah. Also, spears are so much better than they used to be. Oh yeah, spears are fucking broken now. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they they do, they like doubled the damage for them. They still have the same reach, but they replaced the throwing power attack with an actual power attack. So they're just really fucking good. Mm. And I'm having fun with the sledgehammer. I'm I went with the sledgehammer build the uh, the second time and. Yeah, we, Ooh, we, I love that they, I love that they merge the sexual tyrannosaurus perk with the melee perks, so you don't have to like level up two different stats to get better stamina for that weapon. You just take that weapon skill and you do like you know you have more stamina when using that weapon, 
And oh, it's so nice. Now that I've reached the third perk for the sledgehammers, I've just, I never run out of stamina. I'm just swinging everywhere. <laughs> Great. Yeah, and it's a really good team up for us with one using the hammer and the other using a spear. One of the um, spear perks is you do additional damage with power attacks if the enemy is knocked down. So Pega knocks them down with the hammer, I stab them with the uh, spear, and we're taking out zombies pretty quick that way. Yeah, and that's assuming I don't just dome them in one hit, which I do a <laughs> lot for some reason. I guess because I'm really good at hitting the head, but it's like I, I do a power attack while walking through and I kill like four zombies in one hit. And it's like, yes! And I love seeing their heads explode now. The fact that all of the zombies have like breakable body part mechanics now, it's oh, yeah. so it, great. It was fun on the uh, Horde night when there was like ten zombies in the bottom of this gas station we were hiding out in. And Peggy would just throw a pipe bomb and you'd see limbs fly everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but just arms and legs would come flying past us in the attic. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. I fucking love I love Seven Days to Die. It's so good. Uh Yeah, that's been our fucking <laughs> thing this week other than working on videos. The yeah. I missed Stag uh, stream 96 uh, to 93. Is there a way to see the unlisted streams? I am going to be re-uploading them on the side channel. I've just been procrastinating on that because I've been focused on other things. I did get one of those streams up. Um, I'm going to be working on getting the others up. In fact, I'm going to try to upload one of them after this stream. I start the stream, and the first thing I hear is sexual uh, Tyrannosaurus. Okay, then. Oh. <laughs> That's the name of the perk in Seven Days to Die. It's, it's also a line from a uh, Predator, which is a fantastic movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is kind of sad, they, they though, totally to see. They renamed it? Uh, like, no, it's just gone. Were... Oh, they, it's just gone. It's just a... Uh, uh, oh, they basically okay. put... Yeah, I know. It is sad to see that that perk is just gone because, God, the name was so good. But I do like this better. I do think it is better to be able to, like, it's like, oh, you want to do better with sledgehammers? Take that perk and you'll do, like, uh, you know, like, it gives you some buffs plus the whole, you know, you you do less stamina damage when using that weapon. And, yeah, I like that way more. Right, well, shall we uh, get to the video? Yes. Okay, it's 10 minute, 21 second video chat. Let's see what happens. Let's see if points are made and if points are backed up with some fucking evidence. 12 hours later. Yeah, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not too. I've got shit to do. <laughs> hey, how you doing, guys? Here, so today I wanted to have a my full review for Saints Row. So I have finally finished the game, and in fact, if you have been paying attention on my channel, I made already a first impression Saints Row review, and back there I said that the game was actually well not that bad comparing to what other reviewers were talking about. Because like, basically this is no secret that this game is receiving a lot of flack and it's receiving a lot of hate for, well, many of good reasons and perhaps some of them a little... I'm a tad bit worried about the music. I don't know if that's copyright or not, but I heard some lyrics there. Um, not as bad as some of the reviewers are saying, no. It's actually a lot worse than what a lot of the reviews were saying. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that and line here, right there the that he thing. just said... Yeah, the, saying the, there's like, some valid, and it sounds like, as Pagan had said from the preview, that he's going into, and some not so valid, and it's like, okay, what are the valid ones then? What are the not so valid ones then? What's yeah, I'm very curious if you'll actually get into that, because I, I didn't preview past this part, so uh, I'm curious if you'll actually bring up, like, oh, yeah, this, uh, yeah, everyone was right to criticize this, but they were wrong to criticize this part, and I'm just like, hmm... Um, two pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. He sounds so bored. It's making me bored. And uh, tentacle dude in chat. 
I'm more worried about the guy's voice. Is he going to whisper like that the whole vid? Hope not. I hope not either. I mean, at least he's not one of those people who always talks like this in their video all the time, 100%, just not non-stop like this. That shit I can't stand. But yeah. this is less annoying, but still kind of... Mm. Well, many of good reasons, and perhaps some of them a little bit over overreached as well. Personally for me, I've gotta say that even though I finished the game, I actually still feel the same. I still feel that this game is okay, right? It's not... Alright, so, is it good, or is it just okay? Like, because your thumbnail specifically made it that it was pretty good, so we're you're talking like... A 6 or a 7 out of 10? Or is it this, just okay, so like a 5 out of 10? It's yeah, just average, that's, it exists. Th that's one of those things I really don't like about uh, some reviewers or YouTubers, where it's like, hey, this thing is good. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Oh yeah, it's okay. Fucking pick one. Yeah. Now this guy didn't say, you know, it's great or anything, but the thumbnail does says it's actually pretty good, and now he's saying it's okay. It's like, come on. Yeah. Pick one. Yeah, and, and again, like, we would definitely argue that this is one of the worst games ever made, honestly. Like, I don't think it's the worst game, I think. I, that has to go to games that are barely functional, like fucking Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. But it is, I would definitely say it's one of the worst games ever made. I'm not, ne I'm, it depends where the line for one of the worst is ever made, because... Fallout 4 story is so, so, so much worse than uh, this game's story. I would say this is absolutely a really, really bad game. I'm just not sure if I put it in the ranks of, you know, Fallout 4 in terms of story. Or even gameplay. I haven't, I haven't touched Forspoken, so I've only seen bits and pieces of it. And Yeah, it looks dog shit, but I can't speak on its overall quality. Uh, uh, I didn't say it's the worst. I said it's one of. Yeah. There can well, only be one of, like, the worst. Like I said, that the worst has to be a game that's barely functional in any regard or capacity whatsoever. Um, $10 from Classic Old School Gaming. Thank you. And here we have Stag poison the well by saying Starfield trailer look like crap. I'd say No Man's Sky did it better, but without Starfield, the fan base wouldn't uh, have No Man's Sky, but Fanboy won't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound pretty. That does sound like one of his arguments he would make. Yeah. Hey, yeah I, that's I, what just I mean, wasn't oh, impressed by the Starfield direct. There's a lot of what I feel are kind of red flags in terms of like quality and stuff. Yeah, Maybe I'm especially... wrong. Maybe it'll be fucking amazing. Hopefully it'll be amazing. I don't especially, expect again, it will be. Highlighting stuff that can be done by anybody's computer. Well, I guess I shouldn't say anybody's, but anybody that knows how to, to work with an engine whatsoever could make like all those vistas and views in 10 minutes. Especially since most of those vistas and views they showed were like rock yeah. planet, rock planet, rock planet. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Starfield walked so No Man's Sky could run. <laughs> like Callum Upton could uh could definitely like tear No Man's or sorry, uh Starfield apart. Because like holy shit, that 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 none of that was impressive. Oh, and that was the other that was the other one, the fucking meme line coming back. You see that mountain? You could climb that mountain. Here is like that's not just a backdrop. You see that moon? You can go to that moon. It's like, mm. that's so fucking stupid. I just don't know how people are still falling for Todd's lies. Todd the Liar, Fallout 3 has 200 endings, Howard. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can't believe that after everything Bethesda has done, but also the fact that this is basically No Man's Sky, but, you know, slightly downgraded. Or I, I think more than slightly, actually, like really downgraded. It's like, and you somehow don't expect it to be like... No Man's Sky launch? Like, what the fuck? Like, there's two reasons why you should be very 
skeptical of this game, and yet people are just didn't learn their lessons, apparently. No, they never do. As we said, for for some reason, when they said, like, our usual Bethesda quality, for anyone that actually knows what quality is like or has any idea what critical thinking is, that should terrify the shit out of you that they're saying that they're not going to try harder than they have been for their last games, which have all been shit. But everybody else is like, usual Bethesda quality, oh, it's going to be great! It's like, what? How? how did you get that? How does your mind correlate to the fact that the company that made Elder Scrolls Blades, Fallout 76, Fallout 4, Fallout 3, and Skyrim is the game's going to be really, really amazing, guys. I don't know how you how you can mentally work that together. If that's their usual, why is them saying that they're going to give us their usual a good thing? That sounds like a really, really bad thing to me. I would prefer they actually put some effort in. Yeah. It is funny that I used to hear a lot of people say, like, you know how amazing Fallout Three and stuff was, and they they would always say Fallout Three and Skyrim were like the two reasons like why they still support Bethesda and stuff. And it's like slowly people have stopped saying Fallout Three, and and but now but now it's Skyrim. Now everyone just says, but Skyrim though, like Skyrim is so is still somehow like oh, but that one's good, right? And it's like no, how do you not know that that is such a dog shit game when you actually like think about it for two seconds. Well, I think that's part of the problem is games like Skyrim are meant to be mindless fun for a lot of people, so they don't really, like, look at it any deeper than, oh yeah, it's just fantasy RPG game. Hey, I'm an RPG game player. I go to a location and kill enemy and come back. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that's the case because someone I really like watching, I'm not going to name their name, but someone I really like watching, a streamer, you know, they were ripping into fucking Bethesda talking about, you know, like, oh, Todd's at it again. He's lying again. He's lying with Starfield. I'm not playing Starfield. Fuck that game and stuff like that. And just tearing into them and being like, yeah, no, they made Fallout 76 and all this other stuff. And I'm like, yes, yes, you're so based. <laughs> like, keep going, Queen. And then she was like, ah, oh, but Skyrim, uh, you know what? It's like if they just make Elder Scrolls 6, I'll buy it. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I'll buy anything Elder Scrolls. And I'm just like, no, no, you were so close. <laughs> you were so close. And then you <laughs> fucked it up. Yeah. It's like you understood the problem, but then you, you fell into the problem anyway. The Skyrim and its mod blinded player base has been a disaster for the human race. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Running bad is it to have the similar merit that a lot of other people are keeping their conversation afloat saying that this game is simply a uh, okay hang on right. I need to that was some word salady thing there hold on I need to hear not that just again that, but like this is like taking a fucking ambient it's putting me to sleep the way he's talking all right so hang on let's let's listen to this let's listen to his words I, I, you know what I'm gonna fucking uh... I'm gonna transcribe this as we as he talks, so I can see if I can figure out what the fuck he's trying to say. Well, he's going slow enough that it'll be easy. Uh, you'd be surprised. Is okay, right? It's nothing bad, and it doesn't seem to have the similar merit that a lot of other people are keeping their conversation afloat, saying that this game is simply. Hmm. Um, More time, because we're getting into we're getting into some fucking weirdness. Yeah, I I don't want to be rude, but this might be a uh, English as second language type deal, because could be like this is just coming across as gibberish to me. Mm-hmm. Similar merit that a lot of other people are keeping their conversation afloat saying that this game is simply a disaster terrible or just outright awful it really is not that at least yes, uh, it, it, is. It, it is. is it really is it is awful it is one of the worst games ever made 
Um, okay, so you... this is what he said. Okay. Uh, it, so, is okay, right? Is the ending of his one. It's nothing bad. It doesn't seem to have similar merit. It doesn't seem to have... Oh my god, I, I keep wanting to try to correct his own thing. Alright. It's nothing bad. It doesn't seem to have the similar merit that a lot of other people are keeping their conversation afloat, saying this game is bad, terrible, or outright awful. It really is not that. Holy shit. Yeah, this might be an ESL situation. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely <laughs> seems like it is. Um, because yeah, I again, I don't want to be rude, but like that that sentence is just nonsense. Yeah, that sentence gonna be clean. And again, my brain personally wants to rewrite it as it goes on. It is hard to actually say the sentence out the way that he is saying. There, can can you put? So oh, you did post it in chat. Yep. It's nothing bad. It doesn't seem to have the similar merit that a lot of other people are keeping their conversation afloat saying this game is bad, terrible, or outright awful. Yeah, that... That's what my brain wants to fucking correct. Yeah. Again, is he drunk? Maybe. Yeah. And yeah, this is this is the other thing too. If English is your second language, do uh, do the video in your native language, right? Because then a lot of problems would also happen because of a language barrier, like not being able to get your point across because you don't speak the the language fluently. Um, I guess I should uh, take care of this comment really quickly. Uh, Rocky Jockey, can you stop Fed posting in my chat, please? Thanks. ...and afloat saying that this game is simply a disaster, terrible, or just outright awful. But it is, though. Yeah, it truly is. So... If we... Oh, good. I, I know... We've already dealt with an argument from someone else that, um... Oh, it's a Saints Row game, why do you care about the story? The story is, like, the thing people remember most about the original two games, especially Saints Row 2, and why it was so good. The story for this game is utter irredeemable fucking dog shit. Yeah, it absolutely is. It is, it is genuinely terrible. Like, there isn't... There was one good character in the entire game, and then... He just and suddenly he goes mentally like he just idiot. He, he turns, turns into, into an idiot. a creepy skinwalker in the Wally. Yeah. God, I can't wait for you to use that. It's gonna be so fucking fun. <laughs> I could share the link. <clears throat> Cause it is uploaded now. It's just I need to fix some of the time codes because the extra section added on. And then it's gonna yeah. release on Friday. Yeah. Brit at least not to me personally. Okay, all right, so there's the qualifier. It is not that, at least not to me personally. It's like, okay, you personally doesn't matter. You're saying it's, again, it being terrible, bad, awful. Those are qualifiers of quality. Those are objective standards of quality. Those can be proven. You can have receipts and evidence for or against them. You saying at the end, to you it isn't, does not matter. That's, like... It doesn't matter what you think, because these are objective qualities. A lot of people say that, you know, big race over the road racing is a bad game, but it's really not. At least not to me. Yeah. And, and again, it's one of those things of like, a lot of people say 2 plus 2 equals 4, but it doesn't to me. It's like, it doesn't matter if your opinion is, what well, your opinion is. Your opinion can be fucking wrong. Yee. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't like that people keep doing this stuff where they'll say something with that is like an objective qualifier, but then try to do the opinion shield. But, oh, but it's just my opinion. I hate that shit. Yeah, the opinion shield is incredibly obnoxious. Kratosis, was any part of this game made well? I've seen loads of videos of bugs and glitches, not just how heinously bad the writing is. Um... I don't hate the main theme, but I also don't like it because of its association with this game. 
Hmm. Anything done well, though. Maybe the art style, but even that's not that great. The art style would be fine if they had done it better. And I know it's a whole thing of just do a good forehead, but like... Art styles like this can work, it's just the way they did it here... Seems off in many ways, I'm not just talking about the demon mutant cat. Well, we can't yeah. even we can't even say the game loads because the game has so many problems where it doesn't load or it hangs because of a cutscene, <laughs> or it crashes because of a cutscene. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything that this game did like good. Um, like the dialogue is bad, the fucking writing is bad, the story was shit. The game doesn't look that great, especially when you see like the cat and stuff. Um, yeah, the character designs are pretty awful. I mean, not yeah. even talking about the boss, because you could try to fix that with how you make the boss. Yeah. But it's just in general, all the characters are just really not good. Also, something I hadn't really considered before until like seeing this frame of his video, I don't really think the character art style fits in with the world art style. Yeah. Yeah. This feels more like... The art style here we see in the world, it feels much more like this would be a San Andreas sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. The the character should be more realistic, not cartoony. Yeah. Um, Two dollars from Lantern's Glow, thank you. Makes you wonder why they keep ML, huh? Well, I'm pretty sure he's like Todd Howard's friend. Yeah. I mean, they could keep him, they just should put him in a uh, position he's, that's more suitable for him, like Janitor. <laughs> I mean, he's clearly experienced with garbage considering what it's writing as. Yeah. Five dollars from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. It is always amusing when a AAA game is outdone by a dad working on a game in between a full-time job of being a dad. Uh, which game is that? Yeah, as I say. Um, five pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. Pagan, you are the chosen one. You're supposed to destroy Bethesda, not by T uh, the Elder Scrolls Six. You are my sister streamer. <laughs> I loved you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, once I'm done with part four, I think I want to watch the OT again, and I think I might even watch Revenge of the Sith because there's a lot of tism in that movie, but there's still some good moments I like. Um. I know there's this another one... super chat in there somewhere. Yeah. There Ebony's ID is. is one. Um, 220... I don't know if it's if it's South African Rand, or there was another one we got it confused Rials. with, too, because they both there's, do the same. There's Rials, but I don't know what country that's from. I'm sorry for not remembering. I, I've got a terrible memory. Uh, but 220R from Ebony Ziadi. Thank you. Here, to help with your student loans, amigo. <laughs> <laughs> dollars from uh, Reptile0009. Thank you. Love your Fallout 3 criticism. I still really enjoy the game, though, in spite of its flaws. It has high nostalgia value for me. Ah. That's a thing. Oh, yeah. As much as I have problems with Fallout 3, I can still play it and enjoy it to a degree. But it is one of those cases of you have to turn your brain off to enjoy it, at least for me. Um, yeah, and that's just kind of antithetical to who I am. I don't, I don't believe you should have to turn your uh, brain off. Yeah, one I don't like. Oh, go I don't ahead. Like that. Yeah, I was just saying I don't like that. Like, if I have to turn my brain off to play to enjoy a game, it's like, well, then that game's not very good, and I don't want to play it. Yeah, exactly. One... Oh, oh, I see the problem with the currency thing. Sorry, go ahead. One dude made Stardew Valley in his spare time, and it's one of the best games ever made. I'm not sure I would say it's one of the best games ever made, but I do really love Stardew. It is great. Yeah, it's um, The best mod uh, for that game is the one where, you know how it starts off with like your grandpa dying and giving you his farm? 
Um, yeah. There's one that replaces him, like, lying peacefully in his bed with the Family Guy death pose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that starting thing, yeah. <laughs> It's Brazilian real. Don't worry. Or it, it says real, but it might be pronounced real because I remember that's how it was before, I think. Yes. Um, yeah, don't worry about no, not no, remembering it, no, it. I don't mind. Ebony, what the, what the issue was is the fact that the South African uh, Rand is the R, and then the real is the R, and the dollar sign is how they designate between the two. And it's just like, oh, that's terrible. Because the first thing it gave me when I did the R with the dollar sign is the South African Rand, for some reason. But then it says, no, that's wrong. The the R with the dollar sign is reals, but the R by itself is South African Rand. That's, that's terrible. Like, put put Z A R, which is what it which is what the other thing should be for South African Rand. YouTube, stop being uh, start... clearly it's rubles <laughs> or rupees. Yeah, oh god. Clearly at least rubles. at least rubles is R U. Yeah, no, it's rupees from fucking. Zelda. <laughs> uh, Stardew is good. Wish the clock wasn't that fast. Yeah, the clock is a bit fast in Stardew. Um, I use a mod to either slow it down or stop it entirely, just so you could get everything done you want to. But also turns it into a situation where. Normally, one day is like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. But when you mod it, like, one day in-game could turn into, like, eight hours. Like, depending how much you want to get done. Yeah. Okay, I would argue good pros and cons, perhaps, within this game that, uh, you know, that already have touched on and also few the additional stuff. For example, the excellent customization that this game features, it is simply sur- I know he's starting to talk about customization. That's one of my problems with this game too, is the cartoon physics. Like, he, yeah. like, bumped into a car and it started, like, spinning through the air. That's insanity. That's dumb. Yeah, doing, doing barrel rolls. You're just doing, just barrel rolls through the air. Um, also, he's talking about, he referenced earlier that he made a video before his first uh, impressions video, but it's like, okay, mentioning the video is fine. You could say that you went over this stuff before, but make sure you go over the full point. Again, don't, don't uh, just say like, and if you want, you have to watch this video to get what I'm talking about. No, no, don't do that. That's really bad. Yeah. Right? I really like the way there's so much playground within this world that to the point that you can go bonkers. And that's very good. I What? But is it though? What? Again, the storyline of the game well, the storyline the way it's treated is counteracts the bonkers goofy nature of it because it's supposed to be really grounded. These are a bunch of idiots trying to pay off their student loan debt. Okay? Yeah. Like, that can't be overstated. Like, th that's... They're trying to have this realistic take, and then they have the, oh, everything's bonky, wonky, crazy, zany. It's like, why? That goes directly I... counter to everything else you're showing in the game. I also want to point out that you're starting to talk about customization there, and that should be a sign of how little there is a praise of it this game. Oh, you can change stuff in interesting ways. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the well, customization I just find it funny in this that it... game is really mid to be honest like this, yeah. Is, yeah, this it's is not your great. bog standard customization suite except for what also, I like how he to goes the... into con go ahead customization and then immediately just goes into but it's also a big sandbox it's like you didn't even finish your customization point before you went into talking about how big the game world is and shit and it's like yeah. he just said it was one you firm, clearly... and therefore it is it's like no you need to actually yeah, it's back like up. It's like you you're not backing anything up. You you're literally just like grasping at straws. And also the idea that oh well all a game needs to be good is just to have a really big sandbox. It's like okay, well basically any game can do that. And secondly, it doesn't really matter how big the game world is if one there's nothing to do and two the mechanics of the game don't allow you to have fun in that world. 
And for the most part, yeah, no, the Saints Row reboot does not have any of that. The the side stuff to do is boring as fuck, or there's just little or nothing to do. And the gameplay is fucking awful. It is so bad. They actually changed the shooting mechanics in the uh, the DLC because of how bad it was, but it still didn't fix it. Like, it's still <laughs> not good. Like, they, they tried to fix the shooting because it was so bad, and it's still not good. Like, people who like the game are still saying, like, yeah, no, it's not. They didn't really fix the shooting. It's still pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I remember having to do some of the side content stuff, and it just... I didn't find it that interesting. Because you need to do some of the side content to... Uh, complete the main story like um i think you had to complete two two or three of the uh side hustles so i did uh the insurance fraud one and there was one where you had to steal like four food trucks because they were actually running drugs the the yep. trucks uh there you got chased by a few people early on at first but once they were gone you're just driving across the city so, uh, I showed a clip of it in the Saints Row video, um, as an example of the music being repetitive and annoying, but it's also a good example of what I'm talking about here. There's this tense action music playing, trying to, like, you know, gotta get to the location type thing, and yet, you know, there's no one around shooting at me or anything, I'm just driving down empty streets. Yep. Mm-hmm. Man, I wish I had rewatched that um, DLC review for this again, just so I could like have it refreshed in my mind before watching this. Because, my God, it is—it's one of those things where they try to criticize like a trope or like a joke that um, Hollywood likes to do a lot, but then they do the exact same thing. <laughs> it's so bad it's like it, you know it's like you know when you when you try to criticize something it doesn't really work if you unironically do the exact same thing while criticizing them because they yeah. keep doing the thing of like um oh fucking actors it's like man i hope you like that joke because that is the fucking joke throughout the entire dlc is oh fucking actors man i hate actors fucking actors it is so fucking bad it, it's I love the way that video ends as well, because um, the DLC apparently had this like cinematic cutscene of like the gang ramping off of a cliff and then you catching them with a helicopter. And they changed that from a cutscene to it's an actual playable thing that you have to actually catch your friends. With a like a, I think it's like a giant magnet on the end of a helicopter when they ramp off of the cliff while being chased by cops, and the dude was just like, "Yeah, no, I gave this, I gave this DLC the ending it it actually deserves," and he just doesn't help his friends. He just flies <laughs> off, and they ramp <laughs> off the edge with the cops, and they're like, "Yeah!" And then you just hear them all go, "Wait, what the fuck? No!" <laughs> and they just hit the ground. And they all die and explode. And he's like, yeah, that's how that's the canon ending as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking great. Oh, but yeah, that DLC is so bad. It is so fucking bad. Not that surprised, honestly. Yeah. DLC for this game is one of those things where you just go, but why though? Why would you even bother? Why would you waste development effort? Because you didn't have any effort to begin with. Like, what? why? I like strong that this game has. Even though they are quirky, they are also, how can I say, goofy in a lot of ways. I don't really mind them, right? Okay, you not minding them is not an issue. Like, again, you, you're, you're thinking to your opinion, but the fact is they're bad. Their yeah. character traits are that they're all irredeemable idiots. Every single one of them. And in new and interesting ways. 
Not to mention, their idiocy, like, actually affects the story. When yep. the boss and Nina, when the boss is having their fucking depression fit, um, when they're sitting on the couch and joking about, oh, yeah, the, the Panteras are going to attack the idol's party, ha ha. Oh, fuck! You know, that moment yeah. just, like, goes to show what idiots these characters are. That takes them that oh, long it, to remember that the friends they were just talking about being at that party are at the party that's going to be attacked. Oh, well, remember, not only do they say that the party's going to be attacked, and they're like, yeah, Eli and whatever his fucking name are there. Kevin. Kevin, yeah, Eli and Kevin are there. Huh, sucks to be those two. Oh, shit! And it's like, yeah, no, duh. Yeah. You fucking idiots. And again, Kevin is so stupid that he posts your new gang's hideout when your gang has now made enemies of the other gangs, by the way. He posts the hideout on social media and it tags the one of the fucking gangs that you are specifically hiding out from. It's so dumb. And then he doesn't even recognize the fact that it's his fault that he's stupid in this regard. He just says... Oh man, their home, their housewarming parties get a little wild. It's like, no, you fucking idiot! They're coming to fucking attack you. Yeah, it is incredibly irritating. No, it's 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 like nobody's brain functions properly in this world. I can always stick not so seriously right this game is more of a playful time for you to experience and as long how where did you get that no. impression yeah that... what i mean yeah they tried to make this game super grounded and that's part of the problem of like the clashing tones all throughout the game even if you want to say you know oh they're going for a playful experience you can have that without it being fucking retarded yeah, yeah. saints row did that like Look at all the side stuff you could do. It, it was kind of goofy and out there, and you could just have a fun time. But the story was still good. The story for Saints Row 2 is fucking fantastic, and the side content has you spraying shit on people's houses. Yep. Yeah. And stopping college pranks during the fuzz missions where people are running around with chainsaws. That's a, co a college prank. They're chainsawing people apart. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is a fantastic example as well. Yeah, they, like, it it sounds like they do a similar thing to Saints Row 2, where all the goofy, funny, wacky shit is off to the side. Yeah. Whereas the main and story it, keeps it, like it takes itself it, seriously. Well, a lot of part a lot of part of what makes the wacky stuff on the side so funny is the fact that Kiryu is still the exact same as he is in <laughs> the main storyline, right? He's the He's the hard-edged Yakuza gangster. Like, he's, he's all about the Yakuza's moral code and honor. That's his entire, like, basis for being. Um, but in the side quest, he's still that, but now it's slice-of-life Japanese goofiness and randomness and stuff that just happens. So it, it's this juxtaposition of watching the serious mafia gangster, well, sorry, Yakuza gangster, and... Now he's in a situation where he needs to escort somebody who lost all their clothes, like because uh, the some thief came in and stole all his clothes while he was getting them washed, and now he, the guy in quick thinking decided to smear himself with suds so that he wouldn't be naked. But he's like, "You need to get me to my apartment," but the suds are popping, and so now Kiryu has to try to run him through the streets. Technically, this is Ichiban, but they do the same thing there, where Ichiban is still Ichiban. But it, it's just funny. It's just funny because he's still the same exact person. He's still serious Kiryu in a situation where being serious is what makes it funny. Yeah. Like, it, fucking Kiryu, this hardened gangster who has beaten people within an inch of their lives, gets super excited for the fact that he gets to play a children's racing game. Like a little pot, it's called Pocket Circuit Racer. He gets super excited, gets into it and everything like that. And he just, like, if you if your pocket racer falls off the circuit, you just watch him leaning and going, No! 
feel as if like the world has just ended for him. It is funny as fuck. E. I do still need to play those games, but there's a lot of things I need to do. There just yeah. isn't enough time. I just... Yeah, I just don't like the Star game at a fucking. Oh, but it's fine if it's bad, guys. It's 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 literally just the. It's meant to be bad. Yeah, I was gonna say. It's so dumb. I hate this stuff so much. When a game comes out and it's super terrible, and people are just like, "Well, it's just meant to be fun. It's you're just supposed to have fun. You're not supposed to think about it. It's you're you're taking it too seriously." And it's like, hey, I'm supposed to be immersed, okay? That's the point. It's a fucking video game. I'm supposed to be enjoying the game for what it is. If I can't do that, it fucking failed. I'm sorry. That's the whole point of a game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think the whole you're not supposed to think about it thing is very telling of those people's mindsets, like, in general. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kiryu, Kiryu answering phones is the funniest thing ever, too. You say, how do you pick up a phone in the real world, right? You just pick it up and you say hello. Hear you when the phone rings, fucking action pose, zoom in on him. He grabs the phone and yanks it in slow motion, like, Hyah! and then he goes in. He's like, whoosh, whoosh. It's like, what the fuck was that, Hear you? Why, why did you do that? <laughs> as long as you don't take it, take this game seriously overall, I think you may actually have a good time. As long as you are aware of what Saints Row has to offer, right? Because this is the bad part I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into. There's unfortunately are no surprises within this game. This has very big lack of ambition. And also the uh, mission design and in terms of the open world elements, it is identical towards Saint Row the Third. Oh, but you God, just said the sandbox was that's damning of Saint Row the Third, and I, I disagree. I... Saint Row the Third is way better than this. I just, yeah. yeah, I disagree. But I've also recently played Saint Row the Third, and I can tell you that, aside from some surface level similarities, like the mission design does feel a lot different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for God's sakes, one of the most memorable parts in Saints Row the Third is stealing a fucking airplane so you can actually paratrooper jump to attack the fucking penthouse. <laughs> like, that, just the framing and everything of that is just awesome. Like, oh, you, great music you choice, that. fantastic mission design, and it does, you feel like a fucking badass as you just go free falling straight down towards this fucking penthouse so that you can, you know, kick the gang's ass and take it over. I am actually looking forward to playing Saints Row the Third again on stream. Yeah. Um. Yeah, seriously. Just the song No One Man Should Have All That Power is so fucking good. Like, holy shit. <laughs> um. Like, yeah. I'm just trying to remember some of Saints Row 2022's missions. If you remove a lot of the obnoxious context, like the characters and stupid setups and everything, I don't know, they just kind of seem kind of meh. Yeah. I know, um... The one where you have to drive around and, like, scare the real estate agent. That's that's a type of mission that uh, Grand Theft Auto games have. Um, yep. Again, aside from the dumb setup of everything, that's just kind of standard. It's not... There's no real problems with that. Yeah. Yeah, I just find it weird that he was praising the open world sandbox elements just a moment ago. And now he's saying like, Oh, but the world is the bad part. And it's like, well, which is it? <laughs> well, I don't think it's the, he's saying the world's a bad part. Just saying it's a lack of ambition that it's pretty safe. Samey generic. Maybe. Yeah. But it's I not do like safe. that. He says that. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that. He says like, there's no surprises. And it's like, I don't know. I think, 
the fucking Nuwali turning into a skinwalker near the end of the game was a pretty big surprise. Yeah. You could kind of feel that it was coming, but at the same time, you're like, they wouldn't be that stupid. Like, the Nuwali has been shown to be really competent, you know, well put together, well thought out. He's very tactical in his thinking, and he's, you know, can actually take care of himself. And then all of a sudden, it's just, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's weird because it goes from, like, feeling like this game should have been about, like, the Nuwale. We should be playing as the Nuwale. Yeah. And then it just turns into, oh, this character is probably the most retarded character in the entire game. Yeah, he went from yeah. the best character to the worst character pretty quick. In a yeah. single cutscene. Yeah. One cutscene. It's like, holy shit, man. And I know I said this in uh, my Saints Row video, but I feel it's worth repeating. I feel like when writing the story, they realized, oh shit, we don't actually have a main goal for this faction. Cause it, or for, um, for the Saints. Because in previous games, it was always taking down the enemy gangs. Well, yeah. you don't actually really go out of your way to take out the enemy gangs in this game. They get involved in missions you're doing by happenstance most of the time. Um, and, and in Saints Row 1 and 2, there was even more context to it, right? Saints yeah. Row 1, you were taking down the gangs because the neighborhood's a fucking shithole and these gangs are constantly fighting. So we're going to be the ones that are going to rise up and take them out so we can make the neighborhood a safe place. In Saints Row 2, your character fully embraces of being a gang leader and now he wants full control of everything. Yeah, exactly. He or she, it depends on you know what you make play uh, into yeah. when you become the boss. Yeah. Um, where here, it feels really aimless, like they had no direction. And then they got to the end of the game, oh, well, we've defeated, uh, the Panteros, the, uh, Idols, and, uh, Marshall, what, what do we do now? How do we end this thing? Oh, I know, let's turn this character into a villain for no reason. Yeah. That's what it feels like. And the fact that Marshall, again, it is hard to overstate how fucking stupid this is. Marshall, a company, tries to take ownership of a street gang is the stupidest thing I have ever seen in writing. Yeah, that that might actually be the most the single most stupid plot point I've ever seen in anything ever. Yeah, that is yeah. so dumb. And the fact that Not the, just the trying... street gang actually like fucking you know, like feed into it. The fact that they actually entertain the idea that oh no he's right look this is a legal document he's right they own us now yeah like, it's like you're a you're fucking a gang. street gang you're a gang you're criminals you don't follow the law it's the same weirdos that think that if you make guns illegal criminals will suddenly obey the law it's like motherfucker oh they're not supposed to have them as is that, that might actually explain why that mission was written the way it was oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and again even better if I was the leader of the Third Street Saints, right? Again, why is it Third Street, and why did they get Saints when they looked at a picture of an angel? I have no fucking idea. That That's all weird. But if I was the leader of the Third Street Saints, and a private military company says, now we legally own you, I wouldn't be, like, yelling at him. I would have the biggest shit-eating grin on my face and say, thank you very much, sir. Have a nice day. Let him leave, and then I would start going on a fucking rampage. I would do everything I can and be like, oh, they own us. It's their decision. And have to let them, like, dangle on the, the fucking noose in front of the entire world. Be like, yeah, we own the gang. Um, We told them not to do it. We swear we told them not to do it. And we'd be like, oh, no, no, this is their orders. They're marching orders. We're doing all this on their command. Yeah, exactly. I would That's... fuck them so hard. There, there's so many reasons for why this plot point in particular is retarded. That's one of them. The other... Everyone who joined the gang, it's implied that they joined it because of the boss being good at killing from the stupid Boot Hill mission. So everyone yeah. that is there is there because of you. And yeah. sure, you were fired by Marshall previously. He doesn't actually fire you from the Saints for this uh, during this mission for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but like, let's say he did. Well, all those gang members would probably leave with you. And you start a new gang. And they claims ownership of that so you do a new one like yep. it just it doesn't work on any level yeah it, it the only reason it works in game is because the stupid retarded characters keep insisting 
This is a legal document. It, it's it's real. We have to solve this problem. Oh my god. Yeah. He, he's so gonna everything we did before, wrap we you up in red tape. Did. We we legally uh, attacked that payday advance place. We legally did you know all these crimes. We legally hit that train and performed a heist. It's like also motherfucker, come on. It's just insane how they get a fucking non-complete clause as wrong as they do. Oh, you've yeah. uh, stepped in on our interests. That means it's uh, we own you now because non-compete clause. Motherfucker, you attacked their businesses. You didn't make a similar business and steal their trade secrets or anything. Yeah, you're, if... not, you're not a fucking security contractor. <laughs> if you work at Microsoft and get fired, then fucking firebomb their building? That's not competing with them. Yeah. Yeah. I almost want to, like, say, like, they knew that it was stupid and it's supposed to be funny, but it's like, but they did it in such a way that it's like, well, one, it's not funny. Two, it feels like you're actually taking it seriously. Like, this is supposed to be, like, we're supposed to take it seriously. Well, yeah, because all the characters. Extremely fucked. All the characters in the scene take it 100% seriously and not like. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, you don't have a straight man there to, like, be like. You know, it's like if they had a character like the, Pierce yeah. being like, what the fuck, guys? Like, I, we're a street gang, you know? Then yeah. maybe but I could then, be like, okay, Yeah, because then you could see the joke. boss immediately turning around and being like, Pierce, think for a second and shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, but no, they don't have anything like that. So it just comes off as like, it, it's literally as if, like, you know, the fucking mexican uh government just was like oh well we own the cartels now so you're not allowed to be a cartel anymore stop doing all that cartel stuff we own you yeah <laughs> it's like that that ain't how it fucking works son i'd be like if the united states government or no 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 let's let's make it a bit smaller it'd be like if microsoft suddenly went to ms13 and they're like we own you now here's our legal document proving we own you it's yeah. like why yeah it's not gonna happen Oh, suddenly MS-13 is going to stop doing all the murdering and, you know, child molestations and everything like that. No, that's that's totally, that's all going to just go away immediately. Having a straight man in comedy is homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Pierce is such a good straight man, though. Holy shit, it is yeah, just funny. Yeah, he is. He's great. Because Pierce, I... Pierce comes up with great ideas, and then Shondi just comes in and snipes the exact idea, and they're like, that's a great idea, Shondi. What the fuck just happened? Shondi had a great idea. Motherfucker, my... that was my idea first. Don't my... get jealous. Motherfucker. My favorite one is when uh, Shondi calls you with information, and then Pierce calls you with information. He's like, what What do you mean she told you? I told her. And tell Shanti I said thanks. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like, you know, they're just fucking with Pierce. Like, they do it of because course. they know it pisses him off. <laughs> so they're just like, yeah, I'm going to fucking... We're always going to say it's Shanti, even though we know it's his idea. But it makes yeah. him mad, so it's funny. We're going to gaslight him until he fucking kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That also, I never really considered it before, but it also makes that moment at the end of Saints Row 3 even better because Pierce is the one that says, uh, you know, fuck Killbane, we gotta save Shondi and uh, the others. Yeah. I think deep down, Pierce knows that that the boss, Shondi, all of them, they got his back. Oh, yeah. what. They give him. They give him a hard fucking time, but no. If the, the chips are down, they will. They will go out of their way to help Pierce. Yeah, but I, I love that even the media plays in on the joke, not realizing that they're playing <laughs> on the joke. Yeah. And when you go do the casino heist, and they're like, like leadership of the Saints and an unknown gang member <laughs> talking about Pierce. <laughs> Pierce like, what the fuck? <laughs> unknown accomplice, my ass. <laughs> yeah, unknown accomplice. The leader of the stage, Johnny Gannon, an unknown accomplice, robbed this casino. Unknown <laughs> <laughs> accomplice, my ass. I fucking love that. It's so good. It, it is, and it's just fantastic. I'll actually probably be getting to that mission the next time I stream Saints Row 2. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fantastic. It is, it is such a good mission. And God, Saints Row 2 is just so well written. Yeah, it is. 
And, and this is exactly what we mean, too, how we're just kind of reminiscing about Saints Row 2 and 3 here. Like, you know what we're not talking about? Oh, shooting the fucking 900th nameless gang member. It's all the character moments and story moments that stand out and are good. Because that's well written, that's the parts we enjoy and talk about. That's why it matters. Meaning that it's quite, quite outdated in terms of that design. And it's not good, right? I feel like the team had no ambition for this game. Perhaps they knew what they wanted to do, but... <laughs> now, how did you get they knew what they wanted to do? If they didn't have any ambitions for this game, if they didn't try, what makes you think they knew what they wanted to do? This feels much more like a game where they felt like they were forced to make it, and then they put in their shitty politics and bad writing into it. Yeah, this feels like whoever owned Volition was like, yeah, we should, uh, we should do another Saints Row game. Go, go and make one, people. You know? Um, one month membership message from Flannel McManel. Thank you. If a game is meant to be bad, don't get mad when I say it's bad. No, you missed the point, motherfucker. Apparently not if I acknowledge it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's so stupid. It's so dumb when people try to use the argument of, well, you're just not supposed to think about it. It's not supposed to be good. It's like, but then they get mad I, if you say it's not good. And it's like, but you just said. I do genuinely despise that argument, too, because the amount of cases that that can be applied to is really, really small. Like, it's supposed to be bad. And usually in those cases, it's like for comedic purposes or something. Like, it, let's say you're like an indie filmmaker or something, or, uh, whatever. And obviously you're not going to have a big high budget, but you play into that and make it, like, funny haha, -ha bad, but not in a cringe way. You know? That's like, yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be bad, because this is what they had to work with, so they had fun with it, and, you know, whatever. Um, five dollars from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. I would like a Saints Row type game in which the other gangs fight against each other too, but they ally against you at some point. Yeah, that would be nice. That well, that's kind of what they do in Saints Row Three because they're technically of. all going against each other. And the Saints prove themselves to be the bigger threat, so they all kind of form together under the syndicate. But ah, uh, I'm I'm not. It, it I could don't... be done so much more. Like it could be done better. Like, yeah, I can't think of any game that does it. The game that actually has the other gangs fight each other is Godfather 2, weirdly enough. Mm. They'll actually firebomb and attack each other and try to assassinate each other. Um, usually won't work, if, especially if you're very on the, on the aggressive side. Uh, usually the gangs will have to focus on you. But uh, if you let them sit for a while, they will actively try to go after and fuck with each other. Nice, that's the way it should be. Um, oh yeah, that's something I was gonna bring up that I forgot. The fucking because we were talking about how um, the new Wale basically becomes the final boss of the game and everything. It's like maybe that wouldn't have been necessary if you didn't, you know, literally make one of your bosses a fucking joke where the new Wale just shows up and kills him. Yeah, yeah. And and it's like, like literally, like he does nothing throughout the storyline. Pretty much, he like blows up a car. And that's about it. And that's I, like the the impact no, he has he on the story. No, he shoots down a drone. He, that's that's fucking super damaging and important to the story. A drone that he somehow heard over the roar of his own fucking vehicle, by the way. Yeah, and then like when you're supposed to finally confront this dude, he just gets killed off by the new Wally in a cutscene, and it's like, oh great, thanks for making this fucking boss a, a literal joke, nothing character. That's one thing I yeah. do regret not putting in the uh, Saints Row video is a comparison to the other, like, the the final encounters with each boss from the first three games. Because, um, like, all of them are handled pretty decently well. Chasing down William Sharp in Saints Row 1, and then dealing with Joseph Price, dealing with um, Hector Lopez, and uh, 
not Ben King, um, because he ends up joining your side, essentially, but that, uh, that bitch, I don't remember her name, from the Vice Kings. Um, the, especially getting to Saints Row 2, the, the two encounters with Mayro, um, the encounter with, uh, both Mr. Sunshine and the General, and, um, the, the final fight with, god, I forget the, um, Ronin guy's name. Not the kid, but, like, the old guy that you have a sword fight with. Um, like, those are, uh, those are Shogo all... and, um, oh, why can't I think of his name? I know it's, like, right there on the tip of Imperator X says Tanya from uh, Saints Row uh, 1 with the Vice Kings. Yeah, Tanya. All of these are pretty good encounters. And they actually have you fighting the bosses of the enemy gangs because f fucking of course. But then Saints Row 2022 barely acknowledges when you fight an Idol's Collective member. And you don't get to fight Sergio. And you don't even get to fight uh, at a... Well, I, because Marshall is a company, I guess it makes sense you wouldn't fight Atticus Marshall, but still, there's no, there's no, like, second-in-command muscle character for uh, Marshall that you have to deal with. Uh, people in chat are saying Akuji. <laughs> Kazuo. Um, but yeah, there, it doesn't... You don't get those, like, really good moments where you face off against the big enemy of the gang. They, they just kind of happen. Or don't happen in Sergio's case. It ends up leading to a really underwhelming uh, experience. Uh, there are so many good moments with the Brotherhood and the Ronin... A shame the final fight with the Semedi is so lame. It's just, here, uh, here's the boss in a big truck in the mall. I, I'm a little mixed on that, because it is a difficult fight from the first time I did it. Um, I, in fact, I ended up cheesing that fight the first time I really played through it, because I think I died two or three times soon, and I was just like, okay... As soon as I spawn in, I'm throwing all my satchel charges that I unlocked at him, and then blowing them up immediately, and I instantly won. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not, though, when you have the option, right? Yeah. Well, remember, that was the fight, too, the general, when I was uh, on the little little dinky mo, uh, sorry, quad bike, <laughs> and, it, and it launched me off that jump in a goofy way, and my character hit his head and killed him instantly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. Oh. <laughs> to be fair... Yeah, I forgot about that. To be fair, you kill Loren easily in Saints Row 3. And he was... Um, he was marketed to be the final boss at the end. Yeah, I, I don't like the way Loren is taken out. You don't even fight him. He gets killed in a cutscene. Um, yeah. But you do get to fight Killbane in the uh, boxing match. And I forget how you deal with him in the... Um, in the main story, like if you go for him instead of Shandi at the end, I, I forget how you deal with him there. But like, as silly and kind of overdone that boxing match is, that luchador fight match is, it, you know, at least it's something. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know, <laughs> with how fucking dog shit the reboot is, I would not be surprised if they actually tried to explain the new Wally's turn as like, oh, it's actually Sergio possessed him because he didn't actually get a proper boss fight. So this is your chance to properly fight him because it's not actually new Wally anymore. <laughs> it's Sergio. Like I could, no. I, I could honestly see them doing that. No. <laughs> honestly, yeah, I, I wouldn't bring be... magic into it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Because of this, receiving a lot of flack. And I think maybe for a good reason as well. But personally for me, after experiencing this game, 
I've got to say that I had my fun with this game. And I still am going to be having fun with it because I have decided at the end of the day to go for a platinum trophy. Meaning I'm going to have to put in an additional 20 to 25 hours on top. Why would you do that to yourself? Are you a masochist? I guess. He said he had fun with it. Again, you can't really go against that. Like, yeah, that's. Yeah, I guess you had fun with it. But we just have to ask how and why. But otherwise, yeah, you had your fun. Okay. Mm. I don't know, that's... It, it just feels weak when you're doing a video talking about why this game is actually pretty good, you know? Yeah. Just to get that platinum. Meaning that this game, in fact, wasn't as bad as many out... Like, many out... Hold on. I want to hear that again. 20 to 25 hours on top just to get that platinum meaning that this game in fact wasn't as bad as many out like many out to be okay so that's not how that works just because you're having fun with it doesn't mean it's not as bad as people say yeah yeah because people I... actually have evidence to back up the things they're saying and you're just going but i enjoyed it yeah. But I enjoy it. But it's good, though. It, like, with nothing substantive to back it up with. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Also, again, this is another one of those scripture videos. Uh, and I know, again, English is likely not their first language, but the the many as, uh, many, many uh, have of, it's like, what, what was that? Like, fix that. Yeah. And as such, that perhaps this game is receiving a lot of flag for not so much of a good reason. Because again, like I said in my you know, first impressions video, a lot of people simply like to hate on this game because, well, what the, identi the identity of Saint Rouge is supposed to mean for a lot of other people, fans. God, this guy's. Yep. Um. I'm just trying to decipher part of what he said there. Um, let's let's hear it again. That perhaps this game is receiving a lot of flag for not so much of a good reason. Because again, like I said in my you know, first impressions video, a lot of people simply like to hate on this game because. Okay, that 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 should be a good place to stop. It's receiving a lot of flack that it maybe doesn't deserve. Or, well, sorry, for not so good a reason, he said. And I forget the part he just finished on. Oh, people uh, seem to just like to hate it. Um, I'm going to tell you something. Most times people don't like to just hate on things. Yeah. It's like it's, it's this weird deflection that people have. Like, oh, people just like hating on things. Like, no, they actually don't. Yeah, typically they don't. Like, sure, sometimes it'll be something that's hilariously terrible, where it's like, yeah, it's fun to laugh at that thing because of how bad it is. But it's like, even then, that's not liking to hate on it. It's just making fun of something. You know? Yeah, I've, I've never liked that fucking argument, because it's like, man, I wish fucking Fallout was the best gaming franchise ever. I love Fallout. I wish all the games were just amazing. Yeah. So I would have all these great Fallout games I could play. But no, I've only got really three to choose from. Yep. And one of the arguments we have to deal with uh, with that game is, oh, well, the old games still exist. Just go play those. It's like, okay, cool. Awesome. I guess I'll just go fuck myself then. Fuck all those people who want new games in the franchise that are like the old games. No, they just have to play the old games forever. But even better, like, what if we did so? Just the all you got to do with this is just do the same thing. Like suddenly the game, the next game goes back to that old style and everything like that, and then those people complain. It's like, oh, just go back and play the other game. Like you're you know, you don't get to have this one now. Like do you see how much of a fucking shithead that makes you. Yeah.
<laughs> oh god. Three fallouts exist. Three, four, and shelter. Oh no. That's terrible. Uh, no, I think you mean three, four, and seventy six. Duh. <laughs> Oh god, that was the funniest part about the uh, the Starfield showcase is the fact that they instantly cut off seventy six because they didn't <laughs> want to have that show up on screen. Yep, right as it would, you could start to see the seven, and it just cuts. It's like, no, see, we can't, we can't show that. See, we have to show a fraction of the game case to acknowledge like the team that works on it, because it would be insanely rude if we didn't. But cut away from that as soon as humanly possible. So people don't really have a chance to think on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait a second. You're promoting Starfield and your last game was 76. Yep. <laughs> Not a connection they want people to make. Yep. Because, well, identity, the identity of Central is supposed to mean for a lot of other people fans of the central one and two and then there's a uh, very big differences compared to what's uh, you can expect from like central the third and also central four and get out of hell there are big differences in those terms of games this is not central one or two at least i don't believe so even though i didn't really it definitely is wait, wait, wait. yeah even but he's he's just saying even though i didn't really play those it's like oh no so you're so you have no idea why People that like Saints Row 1 and 2 are going to be really upset then about how awful yeah. this game uh, is. I hate that shit. I hate this fucking thing of just people playing a game in the series and then being like, oh, but I liked it. I turned my brain off and enjoyed it. I never played the originals, but you shouldn't be upset. It's like, motherfucker, you didn't play the originals. You didn't play the others. You have no right to tell other people that you know they should or shouldn't be upset by a game in a franchise that you never played. Yeah. I hate it so fucking much. Yeah. Uh Curry twenty one nine says, I noticed that Starfield has modern guns like the AK or the M nineteen eleven. Yeah, we joked about the nineteen eleven particular and said my five world wars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my five world wars. Really play or two, so that's why I cannot argue on that front. But this okay. So, so hold this moment right here. Moment right here. The enemy you are currently fighting. Does that make sense to you? Does that feel fun to you? Like this is an enemy that just gets invulnerability because it's twirling some fucking glow sticks. How does that make you feel when you play against it? No, shut up. You're do not you supposed feel... to think about it. Yeah, do you feel excited? Is this engaging gameplay that you just have to stand there and wait for them to, to have an opening? Like, you can't do anything to this enemy? Hmm. I'll say, having played this game, this enemy is exceptionally fucking annoying to fight. Yeah, it, this this enemy type, and it's not a rare enemy type, which is even more frustrating about it. It just it just grinds any forward progress to a halt as you sit there and wait. You just have to wait for the enemy to choose to become vulnerable. Yeah, they'll throw one of their spinny glow sticks, and you have an opening of like a few seconds to shoot them. Yeah. The only way around this that I found is using a rocket launcher. They can't deflect that, thank god. I'm actually... Deflecting rockets with the glow sticks is something so monumentally fucking stupid, I'm surprised it's not in the game. Yeah. <laughs> but again, so, so listen to what he's saying, but also watch this enemy. Watch this enemy in particular. The 102... So that's why I cannot argue on that front. But this is so much more like Saint Row the Third. And I really like that because Again, did you see what that grenade did? It did nothing in terms of damage, and then the enemy threw its glow stick, thus signifying that I'm vulnerable now. It's so yep. fucking bad. 
It's yeah, they so didn't even take bad. any damage from the uh, from the actual explosion. It just knocked them out of it, and then he shot them, and that's where the damage no, no, comes no, no, from. No, 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 it it did take some damage from the actual explosion. It didn't knock him out of it at all. That's the canned animation of when they're vulnerable. That's when they choose to become vulnerable. Yeah. So that grenade did not make it vulnerable. That grenade just took off a little sliver of the yellow health bar, which is their overshield bar. Watch their oh, yellow I, health bar. I forgot about the yellow health bar, I'll be honest. I thought it was just the red. Okay, I've yeah, so it does do turn. damage. Yeah, so there. See, look Ooh. at that tiny little bit of damage. Yeah, it does a did. tiny little sliver. And again, it didn't knock the enemy out of it. The enemy is actively attacking right now. You can see it better on my frame. The enemy is actually throwing the glow stick right at his face. Yeah. There, and get a little bit oh, more you're there. right. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, I thought the grenade knocked him out of the nope. thing. but You no. cannot knock them out of that animation. They have to choose <laughs> to come out of it. So, the technical term is fuck all. That grenade did fuck all damage. <laughs> 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 God, that reminds me. That re reminds me so much of that uh, funny clip about the the history of Japan when there, when um, Japan was telling Russia to chill, and then like Japan starts to build things. Russia's like, "No, we were going to build a railway through there." So they they downgraded from from a ton of soldiers to a fuck ton of soldiers. Wait, did I mean downgrade? I meant upgraded. And it just shows this thing of, like, here they had, like, maybe um, 5,000 soldiers there, and then they upgraded to, like, 100,000 soldiers. It was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Mirthful. <laughs> when was the last time a game had grenades that did big damage? One of the many gripes I've had with FPS games is that grenades are like a fart. Yeah, I agree. Play. But then it's also like, but if you've ever played... Or watch people play fucking Escape from Tarkov. You know grenades are like the bane of your existence. Yeah, same in uh, same in, in games like Squad. Again, milsim games, where yeah. where the the fact of like if you're within a 15 uh, foot radius of this grenade, you're just dead because you know your organs will be liquefied. Doesn't matter. Or if yeah. you're within a 45 radius, you're getting fucking hit by shrapnel and getting torn the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, the fucking shrapnel and escape from Tarkov is like it's like a magic bullet that always fucking aims for the head. <laughs> it's like I, sometimes you'll be down the hallway and a piece will only hit you in the arm, but if you're like within ten to fifteen feet of that grenade, it, it is a headshot every time. That fucking fragment is going right through your skull. Yeah. It's it's just funny. I remember I have a I have a clip on my Twitch channel. Um, which I don't use anymore because again I use Rumble now, but I have my Twitch channel where uh, I'm like suppressing a guy, and then all of a sudden I hear that sound of the uh, the paddle coming off of a grenade, and I watch it literally arc over the little wall I'm on, and boop, 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 right in front of me, and I'm just like, uh, that's a grenade, <laughs> I just blow yeah. up in a little bit. Oh yeah, there's that great clip <laughs> of uh, me playing the fucking Stalker Anomaly mod, and I'm like in a big gunfight with these guys and I'm I'm doing really well and then one of them throws a grenade that lands right on top of the cover I'm using and I'm just like oh, fuck and I just die <laughs> because there's nothing I can do because it's on top of the thing that I'm fucking hiding behind so it's just like yeah it doesn't matter if I crouch I'm dead yeah yeah there are uh, differences between HE grenades and fragmentation grenades and everything like that you also have uh, Willie Pete and everything um but yeah, it, again, it's their formulation and type of casing that you use. Fragmentation grenades are specifically designed to create as much shrapnel as possible. HE grenades, they don't need shrapnel because you're just going for sheer volume of explosive potential. Mm -hmm. Oh, and shotguns too. They hate shotguns. Yeah, it's like they load every shotgun in FPS games with fucking birdshot or something. Not even, no, more like, uh, I'll be more accurate, like Skittles or something. Yeah, like because they nothing. they melt away like after ten feet. Oh, it's it's a rock salt fucking <laughs> shot. <laughs> oh god, yeah, basically, I it sucks, especially because man, when you see 
games do shotguns right, you know, and then you try to go to another game where they don't do it right, it, you it's so noticeable. It's so bad. Yeah. Because shotguns are so fucking good. They are so overpowered, as they should be. And then you go to a game where they've nerfed it to, like, completely unrealistic degree, and it's like, oh my god, it, it's like, so bad. Like, to be fair to game developers, right? A lot of them don't want the shotgun to be the king of all weapons. Because a shotgun in close quarters is pretty fucking devastating. Granted, a shotgun, mm -hmm. if, even if you're at the other end of a football field and I see you have a shotgun, I'm uh, still not challenging you because holy fuck. Yeah. That was that one where that one uh, criminal dickhead, he, he loaded birdshot into his shotgun and he shot those two officers. Yeah, and he oh hit him in the God. face and they were bleeding really bad and he was really far away. Yeah. Yep. It's like that was just like birdshot. That wasn't even fucking Yeah, that wasn't like buckshot, buckshot or anything. Or anything. Yeah. It's like now imagine if he'd actually loaded that with a more a far deadlier round. It's like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like those two officers would have just been dead. Yes, yeah, so I am very much looking forward to the infantry overhaul for squad. I very much am. I think that'll be a fantastic uh, addition to the game. Shotguns are gay. You got a stroke at first before blowing your load on someone's face. Yeah, that's why it's so <laughs> awesome. Accurate. <laughs> also, if you if you can get it, getting shotguns that have slam fire capabilities is just oh. For anyone that doesn't know, so uh, normally what happens is you'll rack the new shell in. The shell will go up the elevator, get pushed into the breach, and it's good to go. And then you pull the trigger. On slam fire, you can hold the trigger down, rack the shotgun, and as you finish and bring the stroke back forward, it fires off. Yep. Oh, slam fire shotguns are awesome. Yeah, I love slam fire shotguns. They're so much fun. Um... <laughs> God, they mentioned the gay thing, and I'm just thinking in my head, like, what's your favorite type of woman? Shotgun users, men. <laughs> <laughs> this is the master of stroking, right? <laughs> yeah, it is like fanning a revolver. Yep. At least it's not like fanning a pistol. Or that a, doesn't a have a hammer. Yeah, a fan of <laughs> fucking Glock that doesn't have a hammer. Well, I should say an external hammer. Glock is a striker fire, though, but there are some pistols that do have internal hammer. It's the same thing with, like, the AK is actually a hammer fire weapon. It has an internal hammer. Yeah, but it still wouldn't matter because it's an no, internal... No, no, that's what I mean. That's why I said internal hammer versus yeah. external hammer. Because I, in fact, think Central the Third is the best Central game. But again, I did not play one or two, not so much. Any then you can't That's think. Oh, you it can't doesn't make matter. That, statement. that is such a stupid thing. Then I didn't play the you... other two games, but I think this one is the best one. How would you fucking know if you haven't played the others, dumbass? What you should <laughs> say is, over the ones I've played, it's the best. Yeah. And and you can even put the other qualifier in the best so far. Again, just to further cement that, for, this is specifically highlighting that you haven't played them all. These are the ones you played, and this is what you think of them. Yeah, that was definitely a hell of a sentence for sure. <laughs> uh, also, he, part of what he was saying there is that uh, this game is most like Saints Row 3, and again, I disagree. As tism yeah. as Saints Row 3 is, it's still at its good moments. And, like, there... It, it managed to balance its silly moments in the story with the seriousness of the story fairly well for the most part. There's sometimes where it gets a little overbearing in the silliness, but even then, it's better than anything this game has to offer. Yeah, I feel like the only reason he's comparing it to 3 is because of like the art style and some of the mechanics, because... Only the superficial stuff. Like, that. that's it. Like, that's the only way it resembles 3 in any way. Anyway, I cannot count them. But, like, Central 4 and Central Get Out of Hell, like, Central the Third definitely takes that cake for me. And this, this game, Central, it's more of that. It's more of the Central the Third. No. And I really appreciate 
No, it, it, no. it really isn't. You're, you're just wrong here. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I, I will say that Saints Row the Third kind of sowed the seeds for this game to exist. Unfortunately. Because it, it planted yeah. that seed of like, oh, but you can go super silly, so let's do it even worse. That but is one I thing still to would not Saints say. Yeah, but it's like, I still would not say that this is like Saints Row 3. Appreciate that because you got that what I like within this game. But yes, I definitely agree. There's few things in here that's just simply unacceptable. They needed to be more ambition. They needed to have more surprises. And they needed to have different structure towards the mission designs because... <sighs> Okay, so first of all, I want I want to know exactly what you think is unacceptable, first of all. Second, yeah. um, it needed more surprises? I mean, no. A story doesn't need to be surprising. Yeah. And no, Cree, every story needs a twist. And, and also, <laughs> again, there is a thing of being over-ambitious, where... You're, that, that's what makes Slav Jank so good, is because Slav Jank is, is almost universally over-ambitious with all of its things. Yeah, they want to do something far beyond their capabilities. Their yeah. budget. Yeah, and then leads into wild, like, just wild territory. Um, but again, if you know what you want to do with a product, you don't have to be over-ambitious. You can know exactly what you want and make a highly crafted and tailored experience. Like, there's nothing that stops you from doing that. And then a lot of niche games are that. Saints Row 3 turned out that way because the executives heard Saints Row 2 getting praised for its silliness and decided to make the entire game into that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I that hate is that. the unfortunate part. Is a scene here? Well... We pretty much have seen it already done multiple times for different developers and then, mind you, ma uh, matter of fact, it was done by them as well back in the past, like when they were making Central games previously. Okay, so I'm going to say something. I don't care if something really, really fucking fun and well done is reinventing the wheel. If we got Saints Row 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7... And they are all, like, similar to Saints Row 2, but still told very good stories with the characters. I wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. I would like another fucking dozen Fallout games in the style of the first two. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm so looking forward to the the offering from New Blood, because New Blood's doing the, uh, the Fallout, uh, the one where it's a hybrid, where when you're in combat, it goes into first person. And then when it, you're not in combat, it's an isometric RPG. I'm like, yeah, I really do want to see that game. That's got me really excited. Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. And it, again, highly influenced by Fallout 1 and 2. They specifically said that. Oh. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very hopeful for that. Granted, I am totally ready to be kicked in the nuts. But, uh, you know, I'm just like, please, please be good. Please, please, new blood, don't let me down. Hmm. I just don't get excited or hopeful for anything anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Yeah, unfortunately. We've been I mean, it's, it's the logical that way. way to be, honestly. Yeah. I mean, well, it doesn't yes, help that but the fucking... it shouldn't have to be. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't have to be, but the industry has literally conditioned us to not give a shit. Yeah. And don't, you, sh that's... you shouldn't trust a liar. The industry is just full of liars. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. the whole thing with me, is it's not so much that I've chosen the logical thing of oh yeah I, I just i don't get excited anymore it's no you've you've literally killed my ability to be excited for new games and stuff yeah yeah the only thing i can be is pleasantly surprised yeah and uh, i cannot be excited and games like the saints row are exactly why too it's like yeah from the original trailer i probably wouldn't have been um I probably wouldn't have been looking... For, well, I know for a fact I wasn't looking forward to this. Um, but, like, if I heard they were making another Saints Row game, and, like, with 1 and 2 being really good and 3 being decent, if extremely flawed, it'd be like, oh, 
you know, another Saints Row game. That could be cool. I'd like to see that. And then you get this, it's like, okay, yeah. Exactly. Why get hyped for anything? Yeah. Yeah. Um, two dollars from Ludwig Williams. Thank you, Trump twenty twenty four. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, ten dollars from Grandmaster Pi with no message, but there is a message right under that. Uh, thank you. When Such has that excitement in his voice, I just imagine his little lizard self running around the terrarium at hyper speed. <laughs> 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 A dragon, not a lizard. That's a type he's of a, lizard. He's no, just a stop. gecko. He's a gecko that thinks he's Smack both a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> also, that thing I posted in our uh, chat. D. It's just insane. It's unfortunate, of course, it really is. But, you know, there's still some kind of elements of fun in within this game that I'm having. I'm kind of glad that this game still sort of at least exists. Sort of. Oh, Jesus God. Christ, the amount of qualifiers. Holy shit. Sort of, maybe. I Kind of. Yeah, the, good. the, the amount of fun good. that I had. At least, you're, yeah. at least you are specifying that's fun you had. Instead of just saying, yeah. oh yeah, this game is fun. But like, god damn. We're on a wild this, ride. Again, this is why you script your videos, too, so you don't have moments like this. Yeah. There are some people who can uh, just go completely off the cuff for their video. Um, not everyone is like that, and if you're not like that, you should absolutely consider scripting your videos. Yeah. Part of the problem I'm having with this video is he he's... Ob it's a problem we've had before where people are making claims, but then they don't substantiate them. They just say thing is thing and moves on. Yeah. Oh shit. I didn't mean to hit the microphone there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My microphone stand is kind of shit and the microphone keeps like drooping. And it's really annoying. I've got it close to me. So like people can hear me. So when I sometimes, like, stretch or move my arm or whatever, I sometimes bump into it. <laughs> Headset mic gang. Raise up. No, those are lower quality microphones. Yeah, but it, I'm, I'm using one it sounds fine. <laughs> right? Right, guys? It, it sounds fine, right? <laughs> oh, God. Sort of. Not a negative part, definitely want to mention, but yeah, that's a big... What a... Sorry, I was completely distracted from what he was saying there, because look how I'm terrible that sort of kill animation is. Sort of. Okay, now, not a negative part, definitely want to mention bugs. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, that's... that's shit. It just looks really fucking lame and flaccid. It doesn't feel like a, a tense action moment where, you know, you're it's in not, a it's fight and... Robbing and rigid. Shut <laughs> up. You know what I mean. I I agree though. It was definitely it was definitely floopy. It doesn't it doesn't feel intense at all or anything. It just it just looks so goofy. Like two people paid to actively miss each other, and then the one character just pretends to get shot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it feels like bad B-movie acting, and I've seen, I think, I think I've seen the sentiment that this game would have been better if it ended with, like, a director calling cut and showing that the entire thing was just a movie. Like, that would excuse some of the shit like what we just saw, but, like, it, it doesn't change the fact that the rest of the game is still garbage. Uh, you know what it feels like? I mean, the the fact they literally have a gun that's like people pretend to play play dead when you shoot them with it. It feels like it's literally that, but they just added blood effects over the top of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, back. Feel free to. 
Hey Cree, your near-complete analysis of Fallout 4 of it is a masterpiece. Not a single detail left out, including the case being ejected from Kellogg's revolver. Well, I did leave the entire details out of uh, the entire rest of the analysis. <laughs> but thank you, I'm glad you liked it. I very much appreciate that. Why was that woman person filled with orange paint? I don't know why that woman person was filled with orange paint. <laughs> Two dollars from Ludwig Williams. Thank you. This guy sounds dead inside. This does kind of come across as a video someone recorded, like, when they've been up for 16 hours and they're about to go to bed as soon as they're done recording. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. They sound like someone I know, but that's also kind of like... Insulting to the person you know? Yeah, well, it, it's kind of insulting to this guy, too, because it's like... Oh, no. The only reason why he sounds like someone I know is because the person I know is heavily autistic. <laughs> and he talks like this because of that. And I'm starting to wonder if it's like, is this a simul similar situation? Or is this just like an accent they have and they just happen to be stupid? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it is hard to tell. Um, my theory is still on ESL, which, okay, fine. I'm, I'm not expecting every single person on Earth to be a perfect master of the English language, but at that point, it's a matter of why are you making a video in English then if you, you're if you're having trouble with the language when you can't properly convey your thoughts you know yeah and that that's giving the best benefit of the doubt i think even if he did speak perfect english many of his arguments would come across the same as we're taking them they would just be worded better and they'd be easier to understand like oh i found this thing fun so the criticisms of this game uh seem overblown you know yeah yeah i'm back Welcome back. We didn't continue. We just sat in silence for the entire time. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's a big problem. I encounter a few the times of the bugs. Right, one of the bugs as an example. I I get into a helicopter or a plane, and it's somehow for some odd reason the camera completely zooms in. in <laughs> Yeah, we both got that bug, too. Yep. Uh, I think a lot of people got that bug. Yeah. To some sort of a target, and you just aren't... It's like, it's impossible to identify anything. And all I did, I had to pay attention to my map, and so I just, like, you know, jump out and use my wingsuit. By the way, that's well, actually a plus. I really like the wingsuit. Wait, you, you continued using the helicopter even though it was unusable in that state? Why? He also said it's a plus because he gets to use the wingsuit. Oh, it's yeah, fine that this that, remember, that guys, helicopters are broken because I get to use my wingsuit. Remember, guys, Bethesda fans love the bugs. That's why they're fine in Skyrim. Uh... <laughs> what is with that enemy AI? Uh, it's fucking terrible AI because the people behind this game are incompetent. It really works within this also another big bug that i had i actually mentioned it as well in my first impressions video that god another really terrible fighting animation it looks so shit mm -hmm. yeah and look i know you already mentioned the uh, larp thing pagan but it genuinely looks like someone who is overacting fighting someone yeah it doesn't yeah, feel like no it gritty it doesn't feel like like primal like they're just hammering away at somebody to like get them to be like i'm gonna keep hitting you until you stop breathing yeah yeah which is weird because it's like this is a video game you realize these aren't real people you don't have to go easy on them and you're you're that... a street gang you're already a criminal you know what that actually looks like now that i think of it you know how like when, when family are playing with the young kids it's like 
oh, I'm I'm fighting you and not really hitting them, but they're intentionally like kind of overacting it type thing. Mm -hmm. That's what that looked like to me. It's like, oh, I'm swinging super, super wide and like just, you know, tapping your side very, very, very lightly with my fist. And that's that's our play fight thing. That's what that looks yeah. like. Mm -hmm. I was going to bring up like, you know, games that do it really well. And then you look at this and I was going to bring up like Doom, but it's like, but that's in first person. So let's think of one that's actually in third person. And then I was like, God of War. <laughs> like, yeah. like oh my god like even the modern god of war where it's like you know they actually light up and you walk up to them and you like split them in half with your axe and stuff and it's like yeah that's infinitely better than this dog shit um even saints row 3 as over the top and silly as that was and it did have like very silly kill animations or at least fight animations at times um even those appeared to be more impactful because they they were made to look impactful. Yeah. Like, there's one attack that... It, this is, like, one of the only ones I remember off the top of my head. Where your character, like, slams someone's head into the ground or something, and, like, your character will mid-air go into, like, a lying down pose um, to, like, show off for the camera. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's incredibly silly, but the actual attack still had impact. Yep. Yeah. Or yeah. Or as as got brought up, Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs has fantastic like execution moves or finisher moves. Like grabbing somebody, running them over to a counter, slamming their head into the counter, then jumping up and grabbing the the metal like security gate, pulling it down on them and just wham right nice. into them. And if they get up again, you grab it, you slam it into them again. Which yeah, that like, sounds yeah, really that, good. That is brutal. That's that's a street fight right there. Yeah. Also, I don't know if I want to read this super chat out. Yeah, that's a pretty, uh, pretty wild super chat. Yeah, that's, that might actually be a bit too far. Like, to, to read out. Yeah, I think we're gonna not read that one. Yeah, I, I, I don't do that often, but like, come on, man. Uh, I, I appreciate the super of... chat, though. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of feds in here today. Yeah. For some odd reason, up a circle of weapons that I have, and I could not attack any of the opponents or enemies. Until I figured out what was the issue at first, it wasn't really an issue of like on my part, but it was a bug. But then I continue on playing and that's actually a problem because it's saved via the checkpoint. So the save point is unable to be, you know, reversed. So I had to play like this and I was wondering like, oh no, do I have to wait for the patch or something now? But instead I decided to, oh, you know what, I'm going to try see how far I can get without using my weapons just for the curiosity's sakes. And for this is a video trying to like... Saints Row is actually pretty good. Yeah. And he's right. just kind of rambling about this bug he has. Yeah, we're... Again, this is your review of the game. And you're talking about how the game is actually pretty good. I it's... appreciate the fact you're bringing up negatives as well. Yeah, because but... a lot of people don't really do that. But... Yeah. But can you show, like, evidence for... Even your negative points, can you show evidence for these? Yeah, even if I was someone who liked this game, this this video would still bother me because I'd be like, ooh, a video talking about all the good things that of this game, finally! And then I watch it, and it's literally like this dude just being like, well, I mean, it's okay. I mean, I sort of had fun. Now, here's all the bad things, and it's like, okay, but you didn't specify the good things either, though. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, because that's what I was about to say. We are almost seven minutes into this ten-minute video, and he hasn't said anything of substance. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the reason we're getting through this video so fast is because he's not really saying anything. Yeah. The fucking title was clickbait. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm pretty certain it's just going to be clickbait. Like, he hasn't talked about the story or the characters all that much. He, he did vague passing reference to them and said, not supposed to take them seriously. It's like, uh, what? But this is also a video where he's like, 
yeah, some of the criticism isn't warranted or justified. Yeah, I know. It's like, okay, now which one of those are? You can tell us which ones aren't warranted and justified. Apparently not. This could be. Could this be a world record for fastest stag? It might be. No, I think Maybe. I think we've already passed that mark because um, I think it was the second or third stag that was like the shortest because uh, we we had covered that uh, second oxhorn video and we got done with that real quick. Mm. Mm. For some odd reason, it did itself. And so I was like, I was glad because I could continue playing the game now and it just fixed itself. But occasionally this bug still did come back. There was also another bug that I had with a camera itself, right? Somehow the camera is completely shifted towards the top left corner and my character is on the bottom right corner and I could barely aim or look at my own character self. It was weird. See, there's always these little issues and bugs. Now there's... I'm sorry, that's not a little issue or bug. If you're telling yeah, me your massive. weapons evaporated and you couldn't play the game properly without them, like, come on, man. Yeah, that's a huge issue. Or that now yeah. the camera is so far off center you can't aim or fight anymore. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, him trying to say, like, one, oh, it, it, these small bugs. It's like, okay, one, that's that small. Two, those are just the ones that you experienced and like who knows what ones you're not mentioning but like people had more bugs than that like god forbid you played the um train heist yeah the train heist before the fucking shit got patched and you literally couldn't fucking complete the the game if you tried to watch the cutscene you know what the small bugs thing is kind of reminding me of what the whole uh stormtrooper thing things are silly blah 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 so it's fine that uh everything else is silly later on yeah. it's it seems like a similar situation to me where like the how impactful a bug is is being downplayed because oh not not having any weapons not being able to uh, properly fight because the camera is completely fucked. Those are small bugs. But it's like, no, those are pretty fucking big. A yeah. small yeah, bug. Yeah, those are massive. A small bug would be like a prop, like a, a useless prop not spawning in or spawning in incorrectly or something, you know? Not yeah, or you see the yeah. function. A character T pose, like, suddenly. Yeah, for a split and then they go second. Back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Th those are small bugs. Not, like, game-breaking shit that it affects your ability to play. <laughs> a small bug would be something like an aphid. Well, it depends, unless you're playing grounded, <laughs> and then it's a big bug. <laughs> yeah, if he was saying stuff like, you know, oh, the car physics, you know, that, those are small bugs, you know, stuff like that. It's like, okay, fine. But he's literally talking about stuff that... in. It inhibits your ability to play the fucking game. Yeah. <laughs> Small bugs do not interrupt gameplay. Yeah, exactly. There's more issues, but there are really noticeable, for example, like T-posing, or for example, like a lot of structures within the world is getting stuck inside the objects, and it's kind of noticeable in some of the occasions. But like I said, that's not really a big deal, at least not to me. It doesn't really break my immersion of that. Uh, but it doesn't. Way... Okay, okay. It so... doesn't matter if it's a small thing to you. It's actually really big, and it it bothers a lot of other people. So it doesn't matter that it doesn't affect you. Not, not to mention this whole thing of like if it's if you just have somebody t pose and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, once or twice, it's fine. But if it's happening constantly, that does destroy immersion. It's not the fact that it's still a small issue that they're just T-posing and stuff like that at times, but it's because it's happening so often you just can't get invested in any. You want to hear a uh, funny issue I had with the game, and I don't know if Setch had it too or not? When, when you exit the game, like the entire world would unload, and you'd be in like, for a very, very brief second, you'd be on like a gray plane, 
with a generic sky uh with a generic sky box for like just the briefest of seconds and it happened every single time I closed the game. I've never seen that before in any other game. Yeah, I saw um uh people playing the uh this game a little bit and I would occasionally see that where yeah, basically you're just in a gray box with a shitty skyline. <laughs> it looks so weird. <laughs> I think there's just nothing they can get fixed quite relatively easily. So yeah, big bugs and glitches issues as the like. I'm just so so confused. Uh, what what were they doing, the Volition team? Like, what were they doing for the past six months since the delay of the Centro game? Can you believe this, guys? This game was supposed to come out in February 2022. It got pushed to all the way till the end of August, and look how in a state that it still came out. <laughs> yeah, it's a big fucking problem. Yeah, what were they doing that entire fucking time? Hmm. Jesus Christ, man. How are you going to sit here and say something like that and then be like, but this game's actually good, though, guys? At least in your title. Well, I think Grandmaster Pi fucking cracked the code on what they were doing for those six months. Blowing themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you could tell these people are super proud of this game with how fucking ass damage they got when it got criticized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were so up their own like, asses about this game, it was insane. Even from the announcement trailer and people criticizing, like, hmm, this doesn't seem like the Saints. So the uh, media team response is, haters gonna hate GIF. Yeah. Oh, man, the fucking PR for this game. <laughs> and, like, I, it, it was honestly worse than fucking Pete Hines, and that's saying a lot. That's yeah. saying a lot, a lot. Because Pete Hines is fucking atrocious at PR, so to say <laughs> that, they, that these people were worse, you know how bad they'd be. It, didn't one of the devs say that, like, people who criticize the game are terrorists? Yes. That was a community yeah. manager. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, community manager. It's also the game that, you know, put their fucking Reddit mod... Or, sorry, their Discord moderators in the, in the fucking... In the credit. Yeah. Um, one of the developers did post that... Uh, stop stop liking things uh, Strawman con uh, comic, though. Oh, yeah, I forgot about stop that. Oh, my God, fun. that was... Yeah. Yeah, that was so cringe. Ugh. Yeah, that was one of the developers. <laughs> it's like, no one is complaining about people having fun with this game. They're criticizing it for being shit. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty funny because they were like, you know, he, the whole stop having fun thing. And it's like, who the fuck are you talking to? Nobody's having fun. I don't see anybody fucking sitting here saying that they're having fun with this game. Well, apparently this about? guy did. <laughs> it, well, that's yeah. the thing. It wasn't until like a month after the game came out and all that shit had already happened that people then started being like, well, I kind of like the game. And that was only like, what? We've only seen like two or three videos. There's not many. This is a, a, a very sparse field of videos for us to cover. We might have actually covered them all at this point. Yeah. This might be the last one. I don't know if we'll be able to find <laughs> anymore. Yeah. I will be right back, but continue. It definitely wasn't the intent to cover every single fucking positive Saints Row 2022 video, but it's also not our fault that, like, only three or four of them exist, and they all happen to be really terrible. An endangered video species, yeah. I, I do think that is a good sign that there is so few people defending this game, and there's so, like, such a small insignificant community around it that the wiki pages aren't filled out properly. Just incredible in a very bad sense. Because, like, the question is, you brought us the exact same game that you already have made in the past, and yet it's still brought... That's not true, though! It's yeah, not the didn't... exact same game, it's... Yeah. I mean, it would be an improvement if we got another fucking Saints Row 4. As as weird as that is to say. At least it would be better than this.
I actually shouldn't say that. I don't I don't know what Saints Row 4 is like, but surely it isn't worse than this. Broken a mug in lights. It's just it's just weird. It's scary as well because I could seeing like well Volition have crafted here and yet a second well a flop you have to say it right I have to say it it was a flop this game is a flop yes right. good and like the second game that they crafted like Agents of Mayhem was the first game was a complete flop and now this Saint Row is a flop <sighs> I'm just wondering what will happen to that development team I really hope that I don't I, care I'm... what happens to their development team I hope they're yeah. broken apart and scattered to the fucking wind yeah, which, guess what, is kind of what happened to them, honestly. It's just... It's just so fucking stupid, it's like... It's not on you to worry about what happened to them. They made their bed, and they're lying with it. Okay? They chose to push out this really shit-awful game with terrible storytelling and writing, and they're getting their just desserts. This is another sentiment... That's been cropping up more and more that I really fucking despise. Oh, but the poor developers, though. They put a lot of hard work into this, and what's going to happen to them is fit, fit I don't care. I do not give a shit. They aren't entitled to fucking success because they make a shit game, and, oh no, they, they might fucking have to go through some hardship because of it. I don't care. Yeah. I don't know if that makes me an asshole or not, but, like, obviously I want the best for most people. People who aren't, like, genuinely evil. But I, I also just don't care. I, I can't be worried about every development team that makes a game that might be fucking shit and get rightly criticized and get bad reviews and flop. Like, it's a good thing that this game flopped. It's a good thing that Lord of Ring Golem has 12 people on Steam currently playing it. I don't actually know if it's exactly 12, but it's probably not far off the mark considering the Steam charts uh, images that have been going around. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it, when bad games flop, this is good, because if bad games are successful, it means they're going to make more fucking bad games. Maybe they'll learn from this. Maybe if we get another Saints Row game in five years from now, it'll be more like the originals, or even Saints Row 3, rather than this piece of dog shit. Because, let me tell you, if this game here was successful, we would have gotten a new Saints Row 2. We would have gotten the sequel to this game. For sure. Yeah. If this was successful, there is no way in hell they would just leave it at one game. Yep. I don't care about the developers at all. I'm a customer first and foremost. I'm definitely not a charity for every dumb shit that daydreams of being the next John Carmack or John Romero. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And uh, the next comment mentions uh, Felicia attacking their fans. That too, especially... Like, you made a shit game, okay, that sucks. Don't do it again, hopefully. But then they went out and attacked their fans, yeah, it's completely fucked. Fuck them, I don't care what happens. They could go fuck themselves. Uh, Volition attacking their fans was the nail in the coffin for me. I don't care what happens to them. Uh, they clearly hate us long-term Saints Row fans, and they have no idea what Saints Row is anymore. Yeah, exactly. I'm back. And yeah, that's that's one of the things that bugs me is like um the whole fucking oh you got to care about them, you know, the, the poor developers and shit. And it's like, well, they clearly don't give a shit about me. Look what they're saying about us on fucking social media. Fuck them. Yeah. Why should I be nice to them and care about them when they're being so openly contemptuous to me and everyone else? Fuck them. Yeah, exactly. Good. Fuck you, them you, kids. You're, <laughs> you're crazy. I hope they die. <laughs> um, yeah, 
Yeah, oh, you're critical of this game, you're terrorists. Oh, you're critical of this game, you're just telling people to stop having fun. And you, you, you go over your way to edit the fucking straw man comic to have a fucking net, uh, neck beard and fedora for, like, criticizing the game. It's like, yeah, fuck off. Destroy the child. <laughs> <laughs> Crush his weak bones. God, I still want to find that fucking video, but I, I, I saw it once and now it's just gone of the short with the the guy being he's done a few. It's not just this one. He's done a few like this where uh, it's like a charity or something keeps asking him like, oh, don't you want to donate to this thing? And at first he's just like, nah, like ah, just not not right now and stuff like that. And they just keep pushing and pushing. And eventually he's just like, he's like, nah, you know what? I want more. More like put those kids in the fucking mines. Fuck them, <laughs> shit like that. Like I hope they starving. I eat more just so they don't get any. Oh, <laughs> uh, I want to find it so bad, but I I don't know where it is now. I, I, it's just gone. I've tried searching it up multiple times, and I can't find it now. It's so funny. You wouldn't shoot a poor developer, yeah, in the face. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in the face. Why? <laughs> They're going to making a sequel, but if they make something similar like this, I'm going to be very disappointed. And yet, I would not be surprised if they will receive yet another flop, because they really, really need to reinvent the wheel. Perhaps... You do, okay, it's, it's you not do bit... not need to reinvent the wheel. You absolutely don't do that. That's terrible advice. This is something I was considering saying earlier when I said I'd like another, you know, 12 Fallout games in the style of the original two. Like, innovation can help, absolutely, but there's that line you have to draw where don't fix what isn't broken, and that's kind of what Bethesda had with Fallout 4's dialogue system. It was a simple system where you had a list of things and you select which response you wanted to use. It was good. It worked fine. It, there's nothing wrong with it. But that wasn't good enough. ML wanted to fix what wasn't broken. And then gave us the absurdly terrible Fallout 4 dialogue system, which everyone hated, including the developers. ML himself, during his gay little TED talk, was made a joke about how all the developers wanted to strangle him and they were in mental asylums by the time they were done making this game. That's how bad the dialogue system is that he wanted. It's like, yeah, if Fallout... If, um... Interplay didn't die out the way it did and Fallout was still being made by the original developers today... Yeah, probably wouldn't have survived doing the same style as Fallout 1 or 2. Some innovation is needed. But, like, again, you, you have to find that line of where do we improve and what should we leave alone. Uh, innovating just for the sake of innovating isn't good. Or reinventing the wheel, I should say. Yeah. You don't need to become so innovative that you take away headphone jacks on the fucking iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to become so innovative that you charge like five hundred dollars or wherever the fuck it was for a metal wire to hold up your monitor. Yeah, it becomes so innovative that you need a fucking a specific company to replace your windshield because it's curved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it. YP. Well, anyway, my review of this game that I actually consider giving it a 7 out of 10. It's just a pure, pure average Oof. game. In my good days, it would whoa, be whoa. 7, out, 7 of 10. out of 10, middle of the road! Pure average game, 7 out of 10. Oh my god. How? How did we have two people? Two people who've done this. <laughs> Fucking average. Yeah, so that's seven, 7 out of 10. What? Oh my god. Remember, the scale How? goes from 7 to 7. Shit, man. Holy shit. I rate it 707, middle of the road. I can't even believe it. I can't even believe 
that actually does remind me of I people are talking about the IGN average. Yeah, so IGN just confirmed that they don't actually play all the games they review. They look at the general sentiment, and then they'll slap on a rating, which is why there are so many sevens on IGN. They actually said that as a good thing, by the way, uh... as a PR win for them, and it's like, holy shit. They're like, if a lot of people buy it, it must be good. Yeah, IGN actually said this. It was that's why they were getting roasted so hard about their uh, their reviews. I'll see if I can find it because it is genuinely like everybody that's seen it is like, are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? It was a, I think it was a TikTok video that they did it in. Why does IGN exist? Uh, January thirtieth. Yeah, here it is. With so many games, movies, and TV shows releasing every week, it makes sense to focus on the biggest and the best known. So that's the only ones they play, and then all the rest of them, they just give it based off their their stuff. God. I fucking hate IGN so much. We are almost done this video. There's a minute left. Surely he can't say anything terrible in that last minute. And I'm having a moment with this game, at, like uh, as as we're speaking through this commentary. Realistically, I think I should like best give it like a six out of ten if I really think about the game and all the positives and negatives. So yeah, more like two or three out of ten. Yeah, it's two. Like if out we're going to be sure. perfectly accurate to like the quality of the game, two out of ten. Um, I will say it doesn't it doesn't break space and time. Well, it fucks with space and time a little bit. You know what I mean. So at the end of the day, six out of ten will be the best score for it. Alright guys, do let me know what you think about this game as well, and uh, of course, like, if you play the game, do let me know. If you have not, you can still share your opinions, that's fine, but like, you know, it kind of doesn't give you much of credibility if you're saying the game is shit if you haven't even played it. So... <laughs> uh, man, I don't know. If someone's seen the full story, like, second hand, like they've watched a full playthrough, I think they're in a pretty good place to say it's shit. So, yeah, just so you, just a bit of a food for thought, right? Like, subscribe, see you guys all. Have a wonderful day. Thank God that's over. Yeah, that was that was terrible. Way more painful than it needed to be. That was dreadful, dreadful, just absolutely. God, if I had known how bad his voice was gonna be, I would have looked for a different video. <laughs> I, I could have tolerated the voice. It was the fucking salad speak that fucking got to me. Yeah. I don't really like covering videos where the person just speaks complete nonsense. You can't understand what they're saying and their voice is irritating. Yeah. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize that because I didn't watch the whole thing. I found the cure for insomnia. I... I Look, I've been up for a few hours. I should be fully awake right now. I feel like I could go back to sleep after watching that video. Yeah, same. In fact, I probably would go back to sleep after the stream if I didn't have day shift tomorrow. I've been at work. How much of a war crime was it? It was pretty bad. Yeah. So we got through it quick because there was just nothing of substance for most of the video. Yeah. Yeah, it was mostly just him, like, rambling about shit, so we didn't really have much to say on it. Yep. Free. Yeah, I don't... I don't know what else there is really to say. Other than it's just a fucking dog shit game. Yeah. 
Is there anything else we could say about Seven Days to Die? Because I was having fun with that last night and the night before. Oh yeah, we definitely could have some stuff to say about fucking Seven I Days to Die. I can't, I didn't play it! Because you two- Well, you that's not my fault, me. you can always hey, join us! You, yeah, but you two didn't say shit about being up still, so I went well, on and did other things. Well, I didn't expect it after we watched the movie. <laughs> Like, a, a couple hours later, he sent me a message being like, hey, you want to play more Seven Days to Die? And I was just like, yes! <laughs> yeah, and the, the first night we played, um... Fuck, how'd that even go? Alright, Such said we were still up. Um, we weren't expecting to be up that late, because the, the initial intent was like, yeah, let's just hop on and check, like, a few things out quickly to see what it's like. And when did we start playing? Like, 11 o'clock um, Friday night? Yeah, it was somewhere around, like, 11. Yeah, and then it's, like, <laughs> seven hours later. It's just, like, yeah. oh, we're still going. Okay. Yeah. Well, it didn't help that we started with Nava's game, because I thought it would be a good idea, and then it turned out to be shit, so we had to restart. Yeah. God, trying to get through that biome <laughs> <laughs> so we could get to the fucking trader and shit in the desert and shit and just like it fucked us so bad <laughs> uh, they updated 7 days to die the alpha 21 isn't in full release right yet but you can play it if you go to your thing and select the beta to go to the unstable release yeah, yeah. In fact, they have a, um, like a community post or something about it telling you how to, uh, access it right now. That's what we've been playing. Yeah. I mean, if you want, since it's only, you know, pretty early, we could end this stream here and we could do some Seven Days to Die on stream. Oh, Maybe. Because it's pretty early still. Yeah, I wasn't expecting... Um, I wasn't expecting Stag to be this short today. And someone yeah, found, I didn't either. Someone found the length of that one Oxhorn stream that was our shortest Stag previously. That was 2 hours and 50-something minutes, so this is still shorter than that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. Um, I'm also just laughing at the the two things Pagan just posted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie though. On oh, that second one, I'd be like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna end the stream here, and we'll be back in a little bit, possibly with another stream. But we'll yeah. see how it goes. We'll we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah, again, a surprising short stag. So I guess we'll uh, we'll have to fill in all the time with a different stream. Yeah. Dude's word salad was basically all lettuce, no fixins. I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess chill your ship, Cree. Or I guess we well, let's not break tradition. Chill your ship, mate. I have a YouTube channel. I will be doing stuff with it eventually once I get my model. Yeah, uh, we're we're yeah, trying so... to get going more on the uh, VTuber models. Mine is fully designed. We just need to find a modeler to, to make it. And yeah. holy fuck, and I cannot it. wait. And, and rig it. Yeah. But I, it, holy fuck, I cannot wait. Yeah. I still need to get mine all drawn up and sketched out and everything, but uh, I think I'm getting it mostly there now. So, soonish. I, I gotta do the same and then figure out how the fuck I'm gonna get the money for the models. Because that's gonna be it's gonna be rough. Yeah, I've been saving up, thankfully, so uh, I'll have just I, enough to get everything. I try, but I also stupidly offer free movie night and for every, for everything, so I, that also gets into <laughs> my money. Oh God! But yeah, I guess for me, I'm over on Rumble. We're doing uh, lots of streams over there. The stream engagement has been fantastic. The uh, again, you guys can actually leave comments on the streams on Rumble, which I definitely appreciate. But we had great, uh, great engagement on the streams themselves. The stream chat thing is working for Rumble, except for one. There was one stream where the stream chat didn't work, and I don't know why it didn't work, but it didn't. Um, 
but otherwise, yeah, we're just having good old times playing multiple different games. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be playing some more Dungeons & Dragons Online, because I've just been enjoying myself, and the chat seems to be enjoying it as well. It's just been a lot of fun. Good time to relax, and it's an MMO that is unlike any other MMO out there, because it has the tabletop rules in an MMO, which is really, uh, really weird. Well, the models have feet. Stop, Stop asking if they'll have no. feet. <laughs> no, more than likely not. Mine will have shoes, but not feet. I specifically yeah, but... chose a design that does not have feet. <laughs> I didn't even think we were going to get that, the like a full scale model. I thought we were just going to get a bust. Oh, I'm getting a full scale model that I can like lift up and show like full thing. Well, I have to if I want to do the skit that I want to do. That's true. All right. Well, yeah, we might as well go full scale then. Well, it's yeah. also a thing where, like, only the head will be animated. Kind of, um, the best example yeah. I can think of off the top of my head is Pippa, where, like, the head is animated and everything else is static. Yeah, which yeah. is why the neck is weird. <laughs> I love that, though, when, when chat, when someone in chat pointed out, I was like, why is your neck weird and doesn't actually move properly? <laughs> she's like, what are you talking about? And then she looked at it and she's like, oh my god, no, no, <laughs> don't mention it, chat, don't look at it! Pagan will have hooves, not feet. Actually, it's going to be reversed. <laughs> I'm going to have feet, and Kree's not going to have feet. <laughs> they took my feet! They cut them they off! Took feet. They took your feet. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're just doing having fun times on Rumble. Um, i actually debating on doing a Rumble stream of just working on the, the Halo script or something, because I kind of want to redo the, the entire script. I'm, I'm looking at it, and I'm just getting myself more and more frustrated with it. So I'm actually thinking about making that a stream thing, so that'll be three hours of guaranteed working on the script. Um, yeah, so I... Uh, just, again, this Saturday we're going to be watching the, uh, the movie Grabbers, which is a movie where an alien invasion takes place on a small Irish island. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Yeah, it's fucking great. I... There's one scene that just sticks in my head. I, it keeps popping up. I think you know which one. <laughs> there, there, the two that stick in my head is his great joke in the car, because it's so simple and it's such a fantastic joke. And the other one where there are two characters trying to get something to work and they just physically cannot coordinate to make it work, and it is just great. Okay, there actually is two for me, but it's neither of those. It's one where the dude, you know, the, the scientist that has to do with the scientist, where the last scene with the scientist. Oh, yes, that is, and that is great. Yes. I fucking love that. And the fucking the woman channeling her inner Kretosis. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's pa a good one, too. Pagan did mention that one little bit to me yesterday, just like what she says exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Get away from him, you cunt! <laughs> you <laughs> Um, If such is done shilling, then I'm going to shill. And I'm not even going to shill myself first. I'm going to shill someone else first. Um, Young Rippa came out with uh, Isom 2, the second issue of his uh, comic book that's available for pre-order now. And it's doing w uh, really well. Last I checked, it was at $1.4 million, and it's not even been a week yet. Um, and I was reminded I, I about that, because... Huh? I, say, I think my favorite thing about this whole situation was Rippa did a video where the mainstream, uh, mainstream comic book industry was like, there just isn't interest or demand for superhero <laughs> comics these days. And he's like, shows his Kickstarter, and he's like, but there is, though. <laughs> it, it's been <laughs> funny watching the some of the haters he had like first of all the haters he has are completely fucking in uh unhinged it's insane but like part of what reminded me to even bring this up is because i was scrolling through twitter while you guys were um doing your shilling and i found a tweet from young ripa from an hour ago where he's quote tweeting one of the haters so the hater says issue one sold 60k Issue 2 sold a third of that. So, if anything, I'd say he lost support. And then Eric just quotes, Bro, it hasn't even been a week. Ha ha ha. Or, sorry. Yeah, it hasn't been a week. Ha ha ha. 
<laughs> and keep in mind, the original uh, pre-order campaign went on for like two or three months. Yeah. And this current one is as well. It's like, yeah, selling a third of the original um, number of issues sold in a single week is pretty damn impressive. Yeah. <laughs> and they're so fucking desperate to, to hate him. It's ridiculous. Dude, it's insane. It's some of the most unhinged shit I've ever seen. A lot of it's really racist, too, but I guess that's to be expected when it's, you know... <laughs> The fucking progressives, you know, yeah. the most racist people on the planet who claim that they're not racist. Yeah. Yep. As for my own shilling, I released a video a couple days ago. Remake of the Fallout 4 Analysis Part 1. Um, it is about 2 hours and 50 minutes long. It has been really well uh, received by people so far. I'm actually really happy with how it's turning out. It is my most viewed video in terms of the amount of time it's been up. So it's, it's been like uh, two days and an hour or two. And it surpassed everything else for that same amount of time being out. So I'm really happy with that. Part two will be coming out June 30th. Um, the remake of part two, obviously. Part three will be coming out... Um, let me break out the old calendar. July 14th, and part four will be coming out July 28th. Every two weeks. And this coming Friday is the uh, re-release of the Saints Row video that's been 95% censored and has an additional section address uh, ad addressing to Snakeroo's uh, cheap shot at me. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's about it, I think. Um, like we talked about, we might be doing a gaming stream in like... I don't know, half hour maybe? So check that out if you want. And thank you for coming out, everyone. It's very much appreciated. We'll see you in a little bit, maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we both did that at the same time. Yeah. 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 All right. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah. See you on the game stream. Yeah. We'll see you. No. It's too late. <laughs>